style me. Because if I would just put this light on for me. This is Allied Services Friday Night Rivals on my TV WQMY. Welcome inside Mountaineer Stadium. We are in the back mountain of Luzerne County. Tonight, it's a Wyoming Valley Conference clash between two state-ranked teams as number 10, Berwick, takes on number 3, Dallas. Good evening, everyone. I'm Bob Ide, and welcome to week number 9 of high school football. Joining me in the booth, former Tunkhannock area coach Jan Sechak, Paul Grippy will be on the sidelines and join us shortly. And Jan, as we take a look at the District 2 4A standings, we see tight race at the top. Dallas, though, taking the lead after, you know, they beat up on Valley View last week. So tonight's game becomes very important. We have Berwick's coming in tonight with revenge on their mind from last year's two losses. And again, Dallas last week put a thumping on Valley View, the district, former district Tamps, and they want to maintain that home field advantage. Let's talk about Berwick. Everyone talks about that defense and why not. They give up nine points per game, 22 yards rushing per game. Tegan Wilkes leading the way on that side, but our Toyota Spotlight player has seen some time on offense as well. Tegan Wilk is such a great athlete that he gets it done. He's got that quick speed. He's got great ups, as we call it in the game, that his vertical, he just he just makes catches over defensive backs' backs. Let's talk about Dallas, uh, one of the top offenses uh, all around. Over 450 yards <laughs> per game, something like 35, 36 points per game. Lenny Kelly's leading the way. They like to run the ball. He's the main guy. He's our other Toyota Spotlight player. Lenny Kelly is a student athlete here at Dallas High School. He does a tremendous job. 21 touchdowns, Bob, 1,400 yards, and on the legs of that young man is how this Dallas Mountaineer team is going to be going tonight. As you might expect, in the back mound, a little bit windy, but still a pleasant night for high school football. Let's check in on the weather now with Allie DeBicke from the Fox 56 News, first at 10. Hey there, Bob. It's been a cool couple of days across the area, and for tonight's game, that'll be no exception. We're actually expecting temperatures to sit into the 40s through kickoff and even into halftime for Berwick at Dallas. But we will see a few breaks in the clouds as the evening goes on, and this is actually going to help things feel even cooler. Now, I know we had some pretty blustery winds earlier this week as well. Those should start to die down, but it may be a little bit breezy in the stadium, so keep that in mind. We will have another look at what to expect for your forecast on Fox 56, but for now, we'll send it back to you. Thank you, Allie. And we are set for the state showdown between Berwick and Dallas. The opening kick and the starting lineups are on the way. You're watching Allied Services Friday Night Rivals on my TV WQMY. Friday Night Rivals is brought to you by Allied Services. Toyota, let's go places. Figured Law Firm. Luzerne County Community College. Casey Dental. Keystone College. And Net Credit Union. I had had some heart surgery and um, some things went wrong. They said I needed home health and they asked me who I wanted and I said only Allied. That's it. But I had a nurse help to deal with my heart problem. I had physical therapy for my leg problem. I had occupational for my shoulder problem. And I don't want any other home health. They're the best. Following an injury, clients are often unaware of the options available to protect them and their families. Having represented thousands of clients and recovered millions of dollars for injury victims, there is really only one way a client can make an informed decision, to be advised of the best options available while pursuing a claim. Knowing what is best for you as the client assures me, as your attorney, that I achieve the best result for you in your time of need. Legal advice, when in need, figured law firm for you and your family. And here come the Bulldogs trying to pull off the upset, followed by the Mountaineers who are trying to remain undefeated. We are back in Mountaineer Stadium getting ready for tonight's game. The third member of our crew is Paul Grippy. And Paul, this Dallas team, we've seen them as freshmen and they've done better each year. Now they're looking to take the top spot. Paul? 
Well, it's been quite a four-year career for the seniors on this Dallas football team. Uh, many of them started as freshmen. Uh, four seasons ago, 2016, Coach Manello was in his second season here, and he knew the future was the younger players, so he started a lot of freshmen and sophomores, and in that season, they went 2-8, and eight, took their knocks, but steadily improved because in 2017, they went 7-3, and three, and steadily improved and took the next step last year when their record last year was 9-1. and one. Uh, Last year, they beat Berwick twice, both games were wins by only three points, the second one coming three to nothing in the playoff games. But Dallas couldn't get over the hurdle of Valley View until this year and just last week when they finally defeated the Valley View Cougars, who Dallas lost to in last year's district championship. This year, the seniors, after four years of improving steadily, are sitting on top, entering week nine undefeated, the leader in the district, the favorite to win the district championship. It started hard when they were freshmen, but they'll tell you that it was worth the struggle now that they're seniors. Bob, this one's going to be a tight game tonight. We're expecting a good one. Thank you, Paul. We talked about Coach Manello. There is Carm Francesco. His first season here with Berwick, but boy, Carm's been around 23 years, 159 wins. Coach Emma Carmo, Danville, Cardinal Brennan. And basically he's come in, picked up where Coach Sheptock's left off, and uh, has his team rolling for the Bulldogs. Coach Steve Francesco was so excited to get back into the coaching realm. He just was couldn't wait, and this job was calling to him for years, just like it's such a storied uh, program that they have down at Berwick, and he has really implemented a lot of good things that this team has had a lot of success with this year. Well, Dallas won the toss. They will take the ball. And that means we'll see Ben Fife and R.J. Wren back to receive. Brendan Hinkle will do the kickoffs. And are uh, you surprised they're taking the ball? No, I think Coach Manella wants to st set a statement right now saying, with our high potent offense, let's test this defense and see how good they are. So Eric Montas will actually be doing the kickoffs. There you see big number 42. And he's, he tees it up. We are set for our Keystone College kickoff. And this Wyoming Valley Conference matchup can get underway between the 10th-ranked Bulldogs and the 3rd-ranked Mountaineers, Class 4A in the state. A lot on the line. We highlighted what happened last year. Berwick lost twice here. Can they pull off the upset? We are underway in Dallas. Fife from the 15 brings it up and to about the 35. So that's what we'll see. Number seven, take the uh, take the steps. That's Michael Starbuck. He's a senior. He's been starting since he's a freshman. This year he's thrown for 961 yards, just four interceptions. Good facilitator, real good athlete. And, and the way he is so poised in the pocket there, it's amazing. And again, he's he took his lumps as a freshman year, sophomore year, and he's just gotten to be a tremendous quarterback. We want to watch the offensive line versus this tough defensive line. That's what we're going to keep an eye on all night long. So it's right to Kelly as expected, and there is that defense from Berwick. A sh shooting right in is Dallas Schechterly for a no gain. So here is the offense for the Mountaineers that averages 46 points per game. Kelly and Muser are in the backfield with Starbuck. The wide receivers, pretty good themselves. Luke Delgadio has 23 catches. Mike Moransky out there and Jack Farrell, they're all seniors. And up front, no question there, they like the weight room. <laughs> all seniors up front, Coach, with a lot of experience. They really do. And Coach Manello said that even his underclass kids, they like the weight room. And he says that is the di most difficult position to coach and to have your offensive line gel like these Mountaineers have done over the last two years is tremendous. Here we go. Just a, just a base uh, dive play. And you can see how the Mountaineers are trying to get underneath of the Bulldogs' pass and move them off the line for a tough two yards. Mountaineers in that game last week with Valley View ran the ball 51 times. Will we see that tonight? I think so. Their, their formula has been very successful this year. They're going to put it, like I said, in, on the feet of Lenny Kelly. So Starbuck, here comes the blitz by Sheptock, and he throws it over the head. Sheptock put a nice hit on Starbuck, and here comes the punt team for 
Dallas. Yeah, Sheptock came right off the edge here. Nobody picked him up. He had a free shot at Michael Starbuck on that. But again, the receiver for the Dallas team, he slipped on the right side, right in front of the home crowd. Burgess back to punt. Oh, low snap. Gets it underway. And it is taken, taken by Wilk. And Wilk with a nice return of about 15 yards. And da Berwick will start out with real good field position. Looks like on their side of the 50. Well, we talked about that one third of the game is special teams. And we felt tonight, Bob, in our pre-conversations that that was going to be key to this game. And that right there, a bad snap. And that means not a good kick. And they got the Bulldogs have great field position right now inside the Dallas half of the field. One thing to keep an eye on is the wind. It was really windy in pregame, but right now it doesn't look like the flags are going at all. The wind was going left to right on your screen. So here comes Berwicks to get it to Tegan Wilk. And Wilk up for a good gain of about four. So the quarterback is Ryan Laubach. He's a senior. He's thrown for 927 yards and, again, just four interceptions. And we saw him in the uh, Valley View game. And he played with a lot of poise in that game. He really did. And since the Valley View game, this young man, talking to Coach Francesco, says his footwork has become tremendous. And Coach Francesco says that's all on Coach Robbins, developing that young man as a quarterback. First throw of the night. He's over the middle to his tight end, Cleaver. And it is a Johnson College first down inside Dallas territory. And you'll see right here just a quick... Right there, tight end release, and he's, he's sat down, he throttled down in the dead zone and got that key first down for Berwick. You mentioned the wind, it has died down, and I'm sure that was a factor in Coach Manello taking the ball to get field position the second half. Oh, bad snap, Lawback picks it up, but there is the Dallas defense. Number 17. And 17 shoots in, Jacob Esposito with the Big takedown, and the ball's going to be back all the way to the 47. I wish, I mean, we can't say it's that cold out, rainy. That's just a bad snap on the center's fault. And again, they're high schoolers. They're going to make those mistakes. The nerves have got to be really flowing along with that adrenaline. Big loss of 12 yards. Brings second down and long now for Berwick. They average 33 points per game on the year. Here comes the rush. Laubach can run it. Inside the 40, good gain. Third and long, though, coming up for Berwick. Berwick on this play, they went no backs. And again, they did a nice job secondary coverage. But again, their pocket collapsed, and, and Laubach does a nice job. As Coach Francesco said, his footwork has gotten them out of a lot of situations. A lot of people talk about this. The Berwick defense, and we will as well, but Dallas's defense giving up only seven points per game. Uh, they're playing a good season. They've had a tremendous job, and we spoke on our video blog earlier in the week about the vaulted Dallas defense. They've just done a nice job shutting teams down and forcing them to throw the ball long. I, and I firmly believe, up, oh, Mr. Supon. Yeah, Chuck Supon. Third ball. False start. Offense. That'll be third down. Little things in this game are going to play key. Low snaps. We start to talk about special teams, uh, false starts, penalties. Those are the things that are going to make a difference. And, and at this point in the season, the mental breakdowns like that, uh, having that false start, uh, that's what drives coaches crazy. And at this point, again, these two discipline programs, the kids, again, I think that's just an adrenaline right there that these kids are so excited to be playing in this venue tonight. Four-man rush. Robach, Robach steps up. He's got a receiver, and he had Wilk. He had Tegan Wilk put a hand on it, but coming over, Delgadio to make the big hit. That was a great job by Luke Delgadio at the safety spot to read the eyes of the quarterback and then just to step in there and break that up at the last minute. I mean, Tegan Wilk, we, we said earlier, play, uh, the, keys, the Toyota player of the game, that offensively he is quite a threat with his athleticism. So Montez doing a lot of the kicking tonight, number 42. 
Back to receive Dogadio Moranski. They're out at the 10-yard line. So if anything Berwick gets out of this, they may get the field position. Good kick. High. Taken from the five by Delgadio. Who breaks out. With good room. Delgadio still on his feet. And he's going to give Dallas decent field position to the 33. Grotto keys to the game for Dallas. Sound on special teams, which they've been doing, and stick to the game plan. Coach doesn't want to push the panic button, and he never really has in all the years I've known Coach Manello. He's going to stick to the game plan, and he's going to get it done. How much, though, do you think Starbuck passing tonight is going to be something that they have to do? I think that's going to be the X factor because everyone's going to be keying on Lenny Kelly. Danny Muser, they're going to keep you honest with him with a couple fullback traps, and then they're going to try to hit you with Luke Delgadio going down field. Yeah, well, Kelly has not gotten off to a good start, especially you know, after last week, week we gained 297 yards and 33 carries against the Cougars. Again, that's a, a big workload against a very good team last week, and again, these are young men out there, eight, 17, 18 year old, and their bodies are going to be hurt, especially in week nine, and when you're carrying the ball that much. Yeah, He's gone over 100 yards in every game this season. That's going to be tested here tonight. Action. Over the middle, it's picked off. Tegan Wilk with another interception. Wilk, touchdown, Berwick off the INT. It's a pick six, figure law firm touchdown. Another one for Tegan Wilk. That's number 19 and 24 in his career. He just does a nice job playing that center field free safety, and he just read. The quarterback's eyes had just broke, and you saw that nice move at the end for the spin for the touchdown. We talked about that passing, but when you have a defense like this, this is what can happen. So Wilk puts Berwick on the board. Hinkle in for the extra point. And it's blocked, but off the pick six, the dogs take the lead. 6.36 left in the first here at Allied Services Friday Night Rock Rivals. It's go time at your Toyota dealer with exciting cars, including Camry, the best-selling car in America. Lease an LE for only $2.29 a month or buy one with $2,000 cash back. Or check out the 2020 Corolla and lease for as low as $1.79 a month or get up to 1,000 total cash allowance. Go for some of the best deals of the year. Toyota, let's go places. So Berwick gets the score thanks to a pick six from Tegan Wilk. That happened to be his third interception return for a touchdown this season. But he's no stranger to interceptions. He has the Berwick school record for interceptions. Now with 19 in his career, five this season. He also had five as a freshman at Southern Columbia before he transferred to Berwick. So for his career, Tegan Wilk, 24 interceptions and yes he's in demand on the collegiate level earlier this year he made a commitment to east carolina and he will go and play football for the pirates next year so bob one of the best athletes in the state on the field tonight absolutely paul one of the best athletes in the nation going to east carolina university and you saw why he was in the right spot at the right time and he he could be an x factor and you saw it he's already scored Tegan Wilk is a Division I prospect. Obviously, he's getting a scholarship, Bob, as you alluded, to go play for the Pirates in East Carolina. But the way that young man breaks at that free safety spot, he just read that perfectly. Now, granted, Michael Starbuck threw that a little bit behind, and the receiver wasn't looking. So 
uh, it was just the perfect storm for that to happen. Now I expect right now Dallas is just going to, again, they're going to pump the brakes. They're going to just do what they do best. They're going to try to establish that running game, and then they're going to open it up. But to have success in the playoffs, and if you want to have any success in the state playoffs, you have to be balanced. You have to. You do. You can't just run the ball. you got to be able to pass it a little bit. And, you know, after they're running the ball 51 times last week. They had, didn't have to run it against Valley View. You know, maybe so, you know, they don't, they're not a throwing team. And they've had a chance to do that. And they and one of the things I'll give uh, Coach Manel a lot of credit for is playing his young kids in, in all these games that they've blown out this year. It would be real easy for him to keep his starters in there uh, to work on the passing game because you never get that kind of speed in practice from your practice squad. So uh, it'll be interesting. I'm sure we're going to come back with power right now trying to establish that. So the INT went for 43 yards. 6 nothing the score. The Mountaineers offense back out starting at their own 35. Back to Kelly. The ball comes out. Berwick's on it. Montez has it, and it's a turnover for the Mountaineers. We look through at the replay on this, you're going to see that they started to do what they do best. They're wearing them down. They get the gaps. They got the double team, get to the second level. But right in there, the Dallas or the Berwick player just came in with the strip, number seven, Tegan Wilk. It looked like it was Tegan Wilk who made the initial hit on Kelly, knocked that ball free, and another break for Berwick. They're going to start on the Dallas side for the second time in a row. Let's see if they can get points off of this offensive series. But boy, that kid right there showing he wants to win. Ball back up for about three yards. Here is the Quad A Driving Academy starting lineup for the Berwick offense. Bauer and Mason getting a start in the backfield. Receivers, Tegan Wilkes there, Sean Sheptock is back after last week's, uh, didn't play last week, and Blaine Cleaver is the tight end. Up front, they're big and strong. They, too, have four seniors and one junior. Tegan Wilkes said earlier in the week to one of the newspapers that he felt that this team has to work harder. And he said he was going to lead by example, and he's done that in the first quarter already. Mason up for about three more, third and short coming up. Early on, the momentum on the side. Good ball! Personal foul! Oh, I was going to say the momentum on the side of Berwick, but they've had two key penalties on their drives. They're shooting themselves in the foot on this. You'll see they just go with the outside zone on this. And again, Dallas does a nice job swarming to the ball, gang tackling, and, and you saw right there the personal foul that came in that was unnecessary oh. after the play was done. Yes, that's up third and long now. Back near the 50. Laubach out to Cleaver. He's going to be well short of the first down, about the 39-yard line. Let's see if they're going to kick it or go for it on fourth. And you see Ryan Lawball checks it back to his left side, comes back to the right side to his tight end, Big Blaine Cleaver, 6'3", 219-pound junior. And he said, I was talking to Coach DeFrancesco, he's going to be taking a visit up to Syracuse tomorrow. So Montez in to punt it, and off the turnover, Berwick's unable to get any points. High kick. Delgadio sheds one tackle. Can't get out of the way of another, and they can't get him down. Folly a whistle, and the ball will be placed around the 13 yard line for Dallas. So the third time may be the charm for the Mountaineers. Not much offense to speak of so far. No, but their defense, and we said this earlier, Bob, their defense has stopped them now twice deep in their own. Uh, side of the field so now the offense has to do their job you 
So this offense, 331 yards on the ground, 454 of total offense. And believe it or not, they're plus nine in the year in turnovers. Well, they have the two turnovers so far in this game. Kelly with his best run of the night, go up for about seven. Let's take a look at the Quad A Driving Academy defense for the Bulldogs. Boy, Montez on the outside, 50 tackles on the year, 18 of those for a loss. Two linebackers pretty good themselves. Schechter Lee with 45 tackles. Saluco with 65 coming in. And they take that secondary. They're going to fly all over the place. We talk about Tegan Wilkin. Why not? But Cleaver off the 44 tackles, 10 of those for a loss. It looks like we have a timeout on the field with 5.03 remaining in the first quarter. We have an injured player. Looks like for Berwick. Check out his number, but Coach, uh, some grotto keys for the Bulldogs. Well, Coach T. Francesco wants to make uh, Lenny Kelly run east and west, left and right, because he is a north-south guy, and he would rather allow his defense to swarm to the ball to stop him at that point. So it makes a lot of sense. If they take the running game out, they're going to try to make you beat us with your pass game. Well, one of the things Coach talks about is when they watch – the film how much they have 10 guys all running to the ball and they they're that's the big thing if they can see them on film they're excited about that and that's how they play defense that, and, and they're so aggressive and they're tenacious so I mean it's Bullwick Berwick defense right now well now we got motion on Dallas and boy that Berwick defense you talk for tackles for a loss I counted them up I had to use three <laughs> hands 108 <laughs> on the year that's just incredible uh, and <laughs> Trying to get your offense, try to stick to your offensive game plan. When you have that type of defense, you're going to try to get a spark, try to do something different. And that's what has gotten a lot of teams in trouble against Berwick this year. So off the penalty. It's going to be second down and eight. In the traditional eye, Dallas goes. Kelly stood up at the line of scrimmage. Right now, the Berwick defensive line is doing a tremendous job playing gap protection, taking on double team shedding, and then making the tackle. That's a great job right there, textbook. I, uh, by the Dallas or the Berwick defensive line, the interior guys, Slabinski and Cisco. Early on, Kelly has five carries for nine yards and a fumble. Well, it's not the night he, he scripted or even dreamt about, but again, he knew and Coach Manello knew that this Dallas defense is legitimate and they're going to have a lot of hard work to be successful tonight. Three-step drop, and he's going to try to hit Delgadio down the sidelines. Can't pull it in. Preston Robbins on the defense and the punt team back out for Dallas. So Kelly not running, Starbuck with an interception, can't find his receivers. This is what football is all about. You put up 37 against <laughs> Valley View, and you can't do anything the next week. And it's, it's really difficult to keep going. And again, Bob uh, said earlier, this is week nine, and, and the attitude that Dallas Mountaineers have is they, they know what they have to do. And against this team, they're just going to have to be patient. Well, it will be good field position again for the Berwick offense which we haven't seen much of. They've had two key penalties, but they're definitely getting the field position. <laughs> they are. They're, they're winning the battle of the field position, Bob, just as you said. They started twice on the Dallas' side of the 50. Now this time they're at their own 47. Well, since that Valley View loss, they beat Hazleton 40-7, to put up 42 last week on Crestwood. So definitely Berwick is focused. They watched the film, and, and they know what they could have done against Valley View, what maybe they should have done. Wow, and, and they're worried right now about the Mountaineers, and again, they came back with a chip on their shoulder from last year. So Lawbach up for about four inside Mountaineer territory for the third straight time. Well, that's uh, right there, the RPO, run pass option. And that time, the quarterback kept it, Lawball kept it, and he does a nice job picking up a good four yards. He's run 67 times on the season as Lawball. 
his best game. Uh, 165 yards and a touchdown against Pittston area. I think we are very impressed with him against Valley View. But this time, Wilk goes into the Wildcat, and Wilk finds room. Tegan Wilk up for about 15, and a Johnson College first down for Berwick. You'll see that the right side, the right guard, right tackle are pulling. They're coming towards us on the screen. Tegan Wilk in the Wildcat fakes, gives the fake, keeps it, and does a nice job running that ball. So the best drive of the night by either team so far. Well, he had Noah Craig, the 256-pound guard and the 236-pound tackle leading the way for him. Wilk again will take the snap and keep it. Looking for a block, unable to get it. Uh, number 52, it looks like Xander Shaner on the bottom of that. No gain. And let's take a look at the Dallas defense brought to you by Quad A Driving Academy. We talked about Shaner, 34 tackles for him. Also, Ballesta has 25 tackles. The linebackers, again, a lot of guys going both ways. Uh, Muser, 38 tackles. Kelly. You know, stays healthy tonight. He has 50 coming in. Solos, yep. Yeah, 50 tackles. And then the secondary, very experienced back there. Two interceptions for Matt Moransky. Well, they have eight on the year as a secondary, which is tremendous. High snap, Laubach gets it out to Wilk, but he falls down third and long. Upcoming. Not much gain there. No, well, that's, Tegan slipped on that play, but he heads up, he caught the ball, and again, two, two yards is two yards. Not what they wanted to do, but now Dallas has to stay home, and they're going to just have to make sure that there's no secondary play coming off of this. That second effort that these running backs, receivers have from Berwick. Tegan Wilk comes all the way to the near side. Laubach looking that way, goes to the under man, and... And he's out of bounds at the 20 is Blake Maurer. It's a Johnson College first down inside the Allied Services red zone. On this play, you're going to see Tegan Wilk. They actually have him setting up to do a pick play where the inside receiver's doing an out. Tegan's coming in, occupying, and then that's what allowed him to make that reception. Oh, Maurer didn't think he stopped out of bounds. or He was going in for a touchdown. Sixth reception on the year for the junior. So Berwick on the move. Wilk taking the snap, hands it to Maurer. Gets out of one tackle and makes something out of nothing. Hey, we'll take a three yard gain after that. Big hit put in. I think it the looked ball like they had the ball out. came out. They have it. Dallas gets the Barwick turnover. On this play, they just come back with a speed sweep. They give it to him. You'll see him coming across. Laubach gives him the ball. He had a little bit of trouble with that exchange right there. Again, does a nice job spinning, coming back in, trying to make something happen. And you can see that the ball got stripped out by one of the host of Dallas defenders there. Number 76, Josh Bellera. Bellera looks like he ripped it out. That's the fifth fumble recovery on the year for the Mountaineers. And boy, they make a big stop as the Bulldogs were on their way. So they'll take over at the 18. And Kelly out in space. Lenny Kelly with a nice run for a Johnson College first down of 14, 15 yards. This is almost identical to what happened last week at Valley View. Lenny Kelly started out slow, had a fumble, and then he just took matters and does what he does best. That's a tremendous job by that offensive line to give him that daylight to run. Allow those linemen to the second part of the defense. That's what you want, right? Absolutely. We always talk about the second phase of the game, take care of the first line and get to the second phase, and then they're doing that. Play action. Starbuck with a wobbler, and almost intercepted. Good job by Delgadio playing, going back to the defense and knocking that down, or that would have been another INT. Yeah, that pass was uh, shaky at best. He had plenty of time to throw, 
And again, if you look, that Dallas blue jerseys gave him the time. He kind of stepped in. There was a little bit of pressure at the end. But Delgadio, good heads up play to knock that ball out of Sean Sheptock's hand. Like the call on first down, a little play action, right? Get them yeah, get thinking it. what they're going to do. Hey, they know they're going to give the ball to Lenny yep. Kelly 60% of the time. So dial up a blitz for it. Try to stop it. Oh, there is another handoff. No one to get Kelly as Law Mason Lawbach is there for the stop. About a two-yard gain, third along on the way. Collins Ice, number 72, and Josh Bellera were pulling on that time on that backside counter tray that they like to run. Well, that should be it for the first quarter. So there's one touchdown in the books. It was off a pick six from Tegan Wilk, and that's where we stand after one here in the back mountain. We'll be back for quarter number two after this. Hi, my name is Mark Cordelli. I'm the Business Development Officer here at Net Credit Union. Net Credit Union has a team of credit score experts ready to help you. Did you know your credit score is one of the most important numbers in your life? Let us see how we can help you raise your credit score, lower your monthly payments, and eliminate high interest debt. The higher the credit score, the more money you'll save. To date, we have saved our members $170,000. We are a local, trusted, loyal financial institution. Net is a proud supporter of tonight's community event. There's so much more you get when you bank on Net. Net is federally insured by the NCUA and an equal opportunity lender. Visit netcreditunion.com backslash credit score for more information. So we start the second quarter with a defensive struggle here in the back mountain. It is six to nothing Berwick. We want to take a moment to recognize our figured law firm scholar athletes of this game. First for Berwick. Now I'm trying not to make this confusing. Our Berwick scholar athlete's name is Dallas. His name is Dallas Schechterly. He is number 36 on the football team. We met him earlier this season when we did a football game with Berwick. So he is our scholar athlete for the Berwick football team. He's on the Distinguished Honored Roll, National Honor Society, Future Business Leaders of America, and he's an AP scholar. For Dallas, we have Allison Francis. She's a two-time district soccer scoring leader, leading the Mountaineers to a terrific soccer season that will wrap up next week. She has over 100 career goals, and she holds the school records in track and field events. She's a member of the National Honor Society, a volunteer, and she has a 4.0 GPA. So congratulations to Dallas and Allison, and thank you to the Figured Law Firm for sponsoring our Scholar Athlete. Bob? Thank you, Paul. A big gain, as you saw. Starbuck hits Muser for a huge gain inside the Allied Services Red Zone. Let's take a look at it again. And right there, you can see on this play, Danny Muser comes out from that fullback, slips out, runs down the sideline. Bob, you had said earlier they are going to try to have to establish their pass game because they know they have a great run game, and they just showed the confidence in Michael Starbuck to get the job done. 46-yard gain, Dallas trying to get their own touchdown. Back to Kelly. He bounces outside, and he's got his running room. And out of bounds at the two. A Johnson College first down and a first to goal. For the Mountaineers. You'll see they'll be in, they offset the fullback to the left side and they just run that toss, the give play right out there. They just do a nice job of seal blocking, kicking out. Lenny Kelly does what he does best. Tegan Wilk pushing him out of bounds at the two yard line. 16 yard gain, the biggest of the night for Kelly. Right now he's 10 rushes for 41 yards. Well, as Coach Manella said, they're just going to stick to the plan. They're not. Back to Kelly, big push, and just stopped short inside the Allied Services red zone. Hey, 
So at the one are the Mountaineers. Mason Laubach, number one, bending over, looks a little bit tired here early on. Sarbach behind Shaner, and it's a figure law firm touchdown for Dallas. Tremendous push by the center and two guards. Xander Shaner, Josh Pallera, and Andrew Molantaris in there to get that in there for Michael Starbuck to just follow his big offensive lineman in for the touchdown. Ryan Fisher in can give Dallas the lead. The kick is up and it is through. So Dallas marches 82 yards in six plays, and on the PAT, they take the one-point lead. Attending an open house is one of the best ways to become familiar with Luzerne County Community College. You'll have a chance to speak with faculty and staff from academic programs, financial aid, admissions, and take a tour of our campus. Open house is Saturday, November 2nd from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. For further information, luzerne.edu. Well, Berwick had had their opportunities inside the Mountaineer territory most of that first quarter they only get a defensive touchdown coach Dallas looked impressive on that drive they did and more importantly they got the momentum back and they really showed their poise and what coach Mello's game plan was let's stick to it we're not going to get overly uh, emotional about what we have to do we're just going to play our football Fisher for a Keystone College kickoff Wilk from the five. Still on his feet, holding out to the ball, and the Berwick offense will come out to the 28-yard line. So what do you want to see from the offense for the Bulldogs? I, I would like to see them try to just slow the ball down, slow the pace of the game. They're going to try to establish the run because they know that they can throw the ball with Sean Sheptock and Tegan Wilk out there. But they keep using Tegan Wilk wherever they need him to be successful. This Berwick offense under the direction of Carm Francesco averages around 326 yards per game, 33 points as I said. They don't turn the ball over a lot. Laubach, how quickly to Maurer and the Dallas defense right there with Moransky along with Ben Fife. All they're doing is a quick out on this one, and uh, Mr. Maurer, the only thing, advice I would tell him is tuck that ball away. He's putting it out there a little bit too far, and this Dallas defense swarms, and they are taught to punch and, and strip at that ball. That's as good as a run. You pick up about three to four yards. They go back to the eye with Keegan Wilk in the back. Little option. Laubach gets a block. And Lawball picks up a Johnson College first down in just past the 40. Right now, and again, Berwick started out, I still remember uh, in Abington watching them run the Veer, uh, run a option, but they really have gone to the Veer option for the last seven weeks, and they've gotten better and better at their reads and their gives. And that was a tremendous keep that time by the quarterback. Berwick can run the ball, 331 yards against Pittston area this season was their high. Dallas showing the blitz. And Wilk goes down quickly, a yard gain at best. Coach Di Francesco, again, he's he's been in this game long enough. Again, very similar to Coach Manella in terms of the demeanor of we're not going to hit the panic button. We're just going to do what we do. Last play, a basic isolation play. Wilk following his fullback right up through. Pretty much the game we uh, expected to see so far. We thought, and Bob, I think somebody said 13-6 was going to be the score. Ballbach out and hits his tight end, Cleaver. 
inside Mountaineer territory and another Johnson College first down. So let's take a look at the Lazurk Community College replay. You see that they swing the tail back out, trying to use him as a decoy. And Blaine Cleaver, that big body, he is going to be a threat all evening. And he's going to be punishing that secondary because it's just how physical he is. Yeah, we saw him against Valley View. He had four catches in that game, 53 yards and a touchdown. They used him a lot against the Cougars. Because of his, just his big presence out there. Berwick trying to take some of the momentum back. Oh, Laubach trying to squeeze it into Sheptock. He's talking to his receiver. Thought he was going to be in one place. Communication is always key, and we know that. Right now, Coach Robbins is just telling him, just relax. You know, you got these balls. Don't put more on it than you have to. Again, play action. Laubach chased and wisely throws it out of bounds. I don't know if anybody was there to receive it. They're going to point. I don't see a flag, and they're going to throw it. Well, Laubach threw it out there, but to nobody. They did a, their Berwick offensive line was slide protecting. They went to their left. Quarterbacks rolling to the left, but there was no receiver over on the left-hand side. And we talked earlier about communication, another miscommunication on Berwick. We have intentional grounding on the quarterback. That'll be a loss of down. Again, another mistake for the Bulldog offense. Uh, and, and this is, I know Coach Francesco right now is really going, guys, settle down. We got, we're got we stopping ourselves. But so they and, are. And three drives now, three big penalties, and that's killing them. That it is. So it's back to the 38. I call it. Third down at 24. I don't know if you have a play in the playbook for this. <laughs> you don't want to turn it over. Good blocking up front. They're going to try to go long. Wilk out there, and it is intercepted by 22. Dallas. Ben Fife with his fourth INT of the season, just like a punt. It, it really is, but at this point, Dallas has the momentum. Now they got another pick to add to their secondary totals. He had time to throw this ball again. Nice ball going downfield, just obviously overthrown. So we have four turnovers in the game. Both have an interception and both have a fumble. And both teams have converted on those. Well, here come the Mountaineer offense back out. Michael Starbuck. I don't think he's completed a pass yet in this half. But I'm sure they're going to go back to Lenny Kelly. They do. Montez there. Also getting up Schechterly from the bottom of that pile. Oh, that was Muser, excuse me. Danny Muser with the carry. On that play, they just ran a little counter action with the fullback. He jabs, steps to the right, cuts back to the left. And again, all these running backs tonight on both sides are going to have to see the trainers in the morning for the ice bath and then the Bengay uh, massages. These kids are going to be really sore tomorrow. Both teams have one regular season game left. Fife on the end around and Berwick not fooled by that at all. And the ball came out and Berwick's got it. Mike Saluco looks like he came up with the fumble. Boy, Berwick's in business. Again, we get this turnover here. The ball is out. He's going down, and I think what happened, if you saw his right knee buckled underneath, and I think he felt the pain, and that's why that ball came out. I didn't see a strip in there. Cisco looks like he might have come up with a 99. So the third turnover of the half for the Mountaineers, and Berwick has it at the 25. There's the option again. And Laubach just couldn't get the block, but still picks up about four. Well, the hard thing with the VR option or any option is you have to play your keys. Um, this one, they they fake to the fullback. The linebackers have to respect that, and that puts that outside linebacker in a bind. Do I go down or do I have to stay? And again, they did a nice job, number 42, 
Lenny Kelly eating up that uh, quarterback. Yeah, you'll notice a lot of the Dallas players both playing both ways. We'll have to see how that pans out in the second They've half. done it all season, but this is going to be a key to it is that if this goes into fourth quarter, who's in better shape? Ballback quickly turns and makes a nice pass to Sheptock. Low pass, only place he could get it, and it is a Johnson College first down at the 11, and they're inside the Allied Services red zone are the Bulldogs. On this play, just a real quick hitter, Danny Mauser at that linebacker spot going to his hook to curl. But again, Sean Sheptock didn't go all the way in, and that's why they were able to get that reception. Back to the eye they go. All kinds of movement. Lawbach came up. And it will go against Berwick. Another penalty when they have the ball. Again, every penalty right now has been hurting them in terms of where their positioning on the field is gone. So it goes back to the 17-yard line. Another momentum swing, and this this has just a, been a crazy game tonight, Bob. Well, to be expected here when you have two state-ranked teams going at it. Lawbach back into the shotgun, and a timeout is on the field. So, Coach DeFrancesco uh, wants to pull his team over. Probably settle them down, pick the right play at this point, and and you know they need to convert these into points as turnover. They I, had it in Dallas territory. I would expect to see Blaine Cleaver coming out at the tight end spot, just doing a tight end pop pass because they're going to be crowding the line of scrimmage, and it's he's such a big body that it's going to be a nice target for him. Well, the Bulldogs seven and one on the year, Jan, and here's their schedule for the season. That only loss, of course, the game we saw against Valley View. They only lost by seven. In fact, I thought they played very well they in did. that game, but mostly they dominated teams. And next week they host Wilkes-Barre. I talked to uh, Coach Francesco before the game, and he's concerned. Obviously, he's focused on this game, but he's concerned about next week because Wilkes-Barre area has gotten better, and he said they are going to be a force to be reckoned with in the years to come. Let's see what they do after the timeout. Dallas shifts up front. A little RPO to Mason, and he has some nice yardage. Back to the original line of scrimmage, so a third down upcoming. So they've run the option, they've run the RPO. He's had three step drops. They're doing a little bit of everything. They really are trying to run a balanced attack right now, but the veer seems to be their key right now because it's a, such a difficult offense to uh, defend in terms of those assignments. Big third down. Lawbach has some room. Can he get a block? He does. He's inside the five. Close to a first down. Let's see where they mark him. So this will be an interesting call on if it is fourth down. Here it is again. On this play, he's looking downfield. Dallas is over pursuing on their outside, which is forming that cup protection that Berwick wants, and it's allowing him to run up inside. So it's third down, I should say. I thought it was going to be fourth. It's third down and two. Inside the five-yard line. Inside the Allied Services red zone. Oh, tripped up is Mason. His fight flew in. Where are they going to mark it? Uh, about a yard gain, maybe no gain at all. No so game. fourth down and two. Nope, they gave him a yard. Fourth and one. Berwick's offense still on the field. From the three, we're under four to play in the first half. Give it to Mason. Dallas stops them. Kelly was the first man on the spot along with Fife. And the Berwick offense cannot get it done. Jacob Esposito did a nice job. 
they're running in the outside zone. They tried to bring the two power backs over, flex them out a little bit. And that look at that. That's a great job coming up through. Oh, it's Moransky. Moran, Matt Moransky. And they're brought down by Lenny Kelly. So it was actually a, about a loss of three yards, but they can't get it off another turnover. So for all the fumbling that Dallas has done, <laughs> Berwick has just stymied beat themselves. They have, and right now, Coach is going to just, uh, there we go, right back to Lenny Kelly. We're going to grind it out. We have three minutes, three and a half minutes in the half, and I have one timeout. So Coach is going to save that. Up to the 12 they go. Gain of uh, about seven for Lenny Kelly. With Dallas with the lead, they're not going to do anything out of the ordinary no, here. No, they're going to roll the ball right at you. And I think you don't be surprised if we see a fullback trap in here right now in this series to keep Berwick's defense honest. Back to Kelly, and he is stopped in the backfield. Looks like Ryan Lawbach shot in. So a third down upcoming for Dallas now. Does Berwick call a timeout? No, he's... I think Coach Steve Francesco is going to say, okay, we're going to force them to punt, and then he's going to use his timeouts. But he also knows that he's going to get the ball to start the second half. There is Rich Manello, former Kings coach, fifth year here with Dallas. Starbuck is going to roll out, and he's pressured, and he goes down. Oh, that's not what you want to do if you're the Dallas Mountaineers. Starbuck inside the fives takes a, the first sack of the night, and they'll have to punt from their own end zone. On this play, you see him rolling out, and then there's just such pressure. And the two defensive ends, uh, Mason Lawbuck and Eric Montez, Coach T. Francesco felt that they are the strong points in their game on the defensive side because they're so big and physical. 6'2", 236 pounds, 6'1", 235 pounds. Fisher has to watch. He doesn't go out of bounds. It's a bag. It's a shank kick. Wilk picks it up at the 35. And he's up to the Dallas 23-yard line. So it's just like that turnover. <laughs> they have great field position. Again, let's see how how disciplined and these guys from Burrowwood can be right now on this drive. Let's not get any penalties. Let's just we have two timeouts. We've got time, one twenty nine left in the half. I'll have to count up, but I think only one time tonight did Berwick actually start a drive. On the Dallas, on the other side, on their side of the they field. Started, they started one time at their own one. 47. That was it, right? That was all i For I've the most seen. part, they've had the ball inside Dallas territory, but they only have six points to show for it, and that came on the defensive side. It did, but again, um, the offense, they've been shooting themselves in the foot. Great break to the ball. That was Dylan Schuster just standing right there watching Laubach. Almost picked it off. Laubach. Just a little bit telegraphed a little bit, and look at that break to the ball. Again, when the ball's in the air, it's a, it's anybody's ball. It's not. There's no pass interference on that one. So a buck 25 left in this half. Again, Dallas gets the excuse me, Berwick gets the ball to begin the second half. Mm -hmm. At one point here, even a field goal will get them something. You want again, to score twice. You don't want to do again because now you're going to be that deficit, and then to come back out with the momentum. That's going to be a challenge for the Dallas defense. Laubach keeps it on the RPO. He's up for a Johnson College first down. They're inside the Allied Services red zone at the 12. You'll see great fake in there, and he just follows his offensive lineman, taking them downfield, number 52 and number 60. We've called Laubach's name almost every play. He's either keeping the ball or passing the ball. And again, this is what we saw in the Valley View game. He's leading Berwick. He is, and maybe they took a page out of the Valley View game with uh, Janessa Boone, because you know if he's doing it uh, with his feet and with his arm, it's a very deadly combination. 
Be. They're going to put time on the clock. I think that's what Chuck Supon's saying. They put 113 back on it. And the ball is placed at the Dallas 12. Baumbach looking to out. And he makes a nice pass. Muse. Maurer with a beautiful catch. First and goal, Berwick from the Dallas 2. You see the corner coverage on that was a little soft, and that's what that cushion, and that's why what Lawbach saw, and he just threw it out there, pitch and catch. Great job spinning to the outside, away from the defenders. That's a heads-up play by number five. Schuster with a shoestring touchdown-saving tackle. Clock rolling. Berwick from the one. The big push, and it is a figure law firm bulldog touchdown. They'll go for two, I think. Berwick lines up in their heavy, uh, which is two tight ends. They got two uh, running fullbacks in the back of the right side, and they just wedge it up inside for the quarterback sneak touchdown. Be a timeout on the field. Called by Berwick. We'll take a quick timeout and come back for the two-point conversion. My time at Keystone, I really appreciated how teachers worked hand in hand with me to help me grow as a person and as a student. Keystone was a great fit for me. I made lifelong friends there. I chose Keystone College and Under Armour chose me. Attend Open House, Saturday, October 19th. Students and parents, register at keystone.edu. You woke up on time. You remembered your coworker's son's name. You ate a salad. You impressed your boss. Mm -hmm. You remembered to get some groceries. You read a book. You went to bed before midnight. You're already adulting, and it isn't that hard. If you're renting, you're paying someone else's mortgage. But with a mortgage from Net Credit Union, you can buy your first home. Ask Net about first-time home buyer mortgages. And we are back. We'll take a look at that two-point conversion as Lawbach tried to get it out to Cleaver. Here it is again they on the two points. Go with the inside fake and roll to your left. And he was just led a little bit too much. Blaine Cleaver laid out for the ball, but there was nothing there. Good coverage by number 17, Jacob Esposito. So the score is 12 to 7. Berwick has the lead. 38 seconds left for Dallas and finally the Bulldogs cash in on a, off a turnover I, and it was it it was to their favor it was like the odds had yeah. to be going in their favor at this point yeah not off a turnover but the defense held them in I mean you have to right. give Berwick a lot of credit first they on fourth down they get held then they the defense does a nice job getting the ball back on a punt and then offense converts so and they stayed focused and they Willed that one in. They didn't hurt themselves no. either, that that series, which was key. That's what's done at the uh, first three series, offensive series for Berwick, that they've shot themselves in the foot with a bad penalty that really sets them back. On that drive, Ryan Laubach had a hand in all four plays. Here's a Keystone College kickoff now from Eric Montez. A little swiver. Picked up by Fife. Fife has some room and takes a hard hit past the 30. Friday Night Rivals is brought to you by the legendary taste of Grotto Pizza, a Northeastern Pennsylvania favorite since 1953. Order online now at www.grottopizzapa.com. 30 seconds left. What do you think for Dallas? If they don't get the ball, you try to do something? No, I think uh, I think coach is just going to call timeout. Timeout. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to call timeout, settle his guys down, say, look, these are the plays we're going to run. Nothing crazy. 
let's go into halftime. We'll adjust. Uh, we have to figure out how we're going to take care of Lawbach at the quarterback position defensively. Offensively, we just have to maintain our course of action. Parents, save money on your car insurance. Quad A Driving Academy is a certified PennDOT third-party tester. We have helped over 10,000 new drivers become safe and confident licensed drivers. Save money by checking us out at quadadrive.com. 30 seconds left. Bob Ion, C-Check, Paul Grippy. Paul will interview Coach Manello at the half, talk about his Dallas team. Let's see if the Mountaineers are going to try to do anything. Quick three-step drop, and they get to Delgadio inside Berwick territory. And he smartly steps out of bounds, save that precious timeout they have. And that was good coverage. Sean Sheftock really had him, but Luke Delgadio beat him by one step to the outside, and it was a perfectly placed ball by Michael Starbuck. 22-yard gain. I like Coach Manello being aggressive. I. Uh, that's, it's it's really uh, <laughs> fun to see. It's kind of out of character from what I remember coaching with Coach Manello back at Kings back in the day. But, uh, no, that's really neat. Good for them. Well, this experienced team, you don't have to really worry about too much. So, Starbuck back again out quickly to Delgadio. Has room and steps out of bounds at the 30. So Berwick. another Johnson College first down. And Berwick secondary is playing very deep. They don't want to get beat deep, so they're going to let them get the 10 yards, 15 yard outs on these. And then Michael Starbuck, quick to Luke Delgadio. And again, heads up, gets extra yards, and steps out of bounds to stop the clock. So Ryan Fisher has a 36 yard field goal this year. No win to speak of. It's really died down, which is surprising. Uh, so maybe they have to get inside the 20 for him to have a shot. Starbuck to Delgadio again. He had him. If he threw it on his back shoulder, he might have had him. He might have had him on that one. But number 10, Ryan Laubach for Berwick did a nice job reading that and covering. And again, you have the free safety back there, uh, Tegan Wilk, that's always going to be a physical presence back there and hard to beat. Well, the left side is what Valley View took, tried to take advantage of in their game. Uh, number 11, Preston Robbins, the senior. They picked on him a couple times, and that seems what Dallas is doing on uh, this drive a little bit. So back Starbuck, tries to set up a screen, broken up quickly by Saluko. And third down on the way. That's a good call with the screen, and again, they slipped it out, they picked it up, but he actually tripped over his offensive lineman when Danny Muser was looking for the official, like, hey, but it was actually his own man that tripped him. So you need something quick, right? And either get out of bounds? To get, expect something down the sideline here with uh, 10 seconds and one timeout to go. Two down territory. Starbuck with time. And finally, that time runs out. He's taken down. And a quick timeout called, I think, by Dallas. They do, but he's back to the 35, the second sack of the night for Berwick. And Lenny Kelly has to come out because his helmet came off, so he has to come out for one play. Well, now it's just you have to throw it to the end zone at this there, point, right? Yeah, with two seconds left. And the way Berwick's secondary was playing so deep and playing so far off, it would be almost impossible to get that in there. But, hey, stranger things have happened, and this is a pretty exciting game to hear at Mountaineer Stadium. Yeah, they started off the drive. Two quick pass re receptions, but two incompletions after that. So the game we expected to see coming up at the half, it's a Toyota... Halftime report, we'll check in on the Fox 56 News first at 10 and see what's coming up on that. Paul Grippy will have an interview with our friends from Allied Services, and then Jan and I will be back in the booth taking a look at some first half highlights. So on fourth down, two seconds left. See what Dallas will do with the ball. 
A flag comes in, so whatever happens may be coming back. It goes up and it is uh, knocked around and goes incomplete. This is against Dallas. You, you would think this would be uh, declined, and that will do it. So one half in the book here in the back mountain. Berwick has come in, ready to play. They have a 12-7 lead at the half. Let's go down now. Paul with the Dallas coach. Okay, Coach, a low-scoring first half, a defensive battle. So what do you think of your defense so far? Uh, they're doing a great job. We've been on short field the entire night. we got to stop turning the ball over. I mean, that's as simple as that. we got to sustain drives. But the defense, they've been backed up all night long and did a nice job so far. Okay, Coach, your intensity for this team is amazing. So here we are, the first half that we thought it would be, low scoring and defense, and you know it's going to be a tight second half too. Thank you, Paul. And that will do it. So we'll get to our Toyota halftime report, and Jan and I will be back in a few minutes with stats and highlights from the first half. Great game here in the back mountain. The Bulldogs lead the Mountaineers by five. You're watching Allied Services Friday Night Rivals on MyTV WQMY. Friday Night Rivals is brought to you by Allied Services. Toyota, let's go places. Figured Law Firm. Luzerne County Community College. Casey Dental. Keystone College. And Net Credit Union. This is my grandfather, Arlington McClough, also known as Butch, but I called him Poppy. My grandfather was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. We chose Allied Hospice. Um, he wanted to be at home, he wanted to be comfortable, he wanted to feel safe. Um, they were kind, they were caring, they were loving, and they were knowledgeable. I loved him with all my heart. He was just the best man I ever knew in my life. Creating smiles one family at a time. Casey Dental understands all high school athletes. Our team offers Invisalign and orthodontics to help straighten teeth, sports guards to protect your teeth, and dental services to make your smile stand out from the rest. Look for the Casey Dental Smile Cam at the next high school football game, and you just might see yourself on television. Casey Dental, 1073 Oak Street, Pittston Township. Easy to get to from Scranton and Wilkes Barre. Call 570-654-4141 or visit CaseyDental.com. Following an injury, clients are often unaware of the options available to protect them and their families. Having represented thousands of clients and recovered millions of dollars for injury victims, there is really only one way a client can make an informed decision, to be advised of the best options available while pursuing a claim. Knowing what is best for you as the client assures me, as your attorney, that I achieve the best result for you in your time of need. Legal advice, when in need, figured law firm for you and your family. murder. Will the punishment fit the crime? A community screams for blood. Law and Order SVU. Monday night at 8 on my TV. This is the Friday Night Rivals Halftime News Update brought to you by Toyota. Thanks for joining us for this Fox 56 Halftime Update. I'm Jamie Innes. Here are a couple of the stories we're working on for tonight's newscast after the game. A Luzerne County man will spend 20 years behind bars for drug distribution resulting in death. 36-year-old Rodney Williams pleaded guilty to supplying drugs to a customer back in December of 2017 who died two days after using them. He had been selling fentanyl and heroin. A crime alert in Scranton. Police say dozens of tires were found slashed along the area of Railroad Avenue and Emmett Street last night. Police say six vehicles were hit. Anyone with information is asked to call police. Dozens of northeastern Pennsylvania residents came together in Butler Township, Luzerne County, for a spotted lanternfly workshop. 
The species has already spread to Monroe, Carbon, and Schuylkill counties. They lay egg masses with 30 to 50 eggs each. Environmental specialists say they could be making their way to Luzerne County soon. We don't know how big they're going to get up here in terms of numbers, but we're afraid they're going to be big. The risk is that they're a threat to the fruit trees and blueberries and things like that. Lanternflies were found in Pennsylvania in 2014 and have spread to 14 counties. Anyone who sees one is encouraged to kill it and report it to the Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture, especially if they have not been reported in your county yet. Penn State football is headed for their biggest game of the season tomorrow night in Happy Valley. The seventh ranked Nittany Lions will be taking on number 16, my Michigan Wolverines, in what will be a sold out Beaver Stadium. U of M will face one of the best defensives in college football and a whiteout. Chief Meteorologist Allie Debicki has a look at your game time forecast for tonight. Hey, Allie. Hey there, sunshine actually came in earlier this evening and we're still expecting the sky to continue to clear late tonight into early tomorrow. And that's really going to impact us temperature wise. Now, once again, as we head to our stadium forecast, temperatures for the most part will be sitting into the 40s. But look as we head late tonight into early tomorrow, we could be dipping into the low 30s, folks, and that could actually bring out a little frost across our area. Once again, tonight, Berwick at Dallas halftime forecast sitting near 45 as sky continues to clear. By the end of the game, we're sitting at 42. We'll have a look at your forecast and what to expect all coming up after the game. All right. Thanks, Allie, and thank you for watching. We'll see you back on Fox 56 tonight after the game. You woke up on time. You remembered your co-worker's son's name. You ate a salad. You impressed your boss. Mm -hmm. You remembered to get some groceries. You read a book. You went to bed before midnight. You're already adulting, and it isn't that hard. If you're renting, you're paying someone else's mortgage. But with a mortgage from Net Credit Union, you can buy your first home. Ask Net about first-time home buyer mortgages. Creating smiles one family at a time. Casey Dental understands all high school athletes. Our team offers Invisalign and orthodontics to help straighten teeth, sports guards to protect your teeth, and dental services to make your smile stand out from the rest. Look for the Casey Dental Smile Cam at the next high school football game, and you just might see yourself on television. Casey Dental, 1073 Oak Street, Pittston Township. Easy to get to from Scranton and Wilkes-Barre. Call 570-654-4141 or visit CaseyDental.com. Are we sure this is about drugs? He's literally covered in drugs. It's about desire. I'm two seconds away from kicking you in the business. Monday at 9 on Fox 56. Fox Sunday. It must be killed. It bears the mark of the beast. <gasps> Sunday at 8 on Fox 56. And as the teams get ready to prepare for the second half of football tonight, we visit the Allied Services facility here in Clark Summit with some exciting news. I'm joined by Bill Conaboy, the president of Allied Services. And Allied always has been expanding, but this past week a new expansion into Wilkes-Barre. Yes, thanks very much. It's really a great week for the Allied Services healthcare system, for the Diocese of Scranton, for the communities of Northeast and Central Pennsylvania and most importantly, for the residents, the patients, and the employees of the facilities in Wilkes-Barre that Allied Services purchased from the Diocese of Scranton. 
and you've been building up to this for a while, looking at it, and finally purchased them this past week. What's your intentions with those facilities? Yes, uh, after months of work, um, we intend with these facilities, which are formerly known as Little Flower Manor and St. Therese Residence, which are on Mead Street in Wilkes-Barre, and formerly known as St. Luke's Villa, which is on Northampton Street in Wilkes-Barre. These are skilled nursing facilities, personal care facilities, and one independent living facility. So our intent is to continue the wonderful tradition of care that the Diocese of Scranton has provided for many years and to bring our resources to improve those facilities and hopefully to improve the care, although it's always been terrific, but to bring our skill set, our clinicians, our expertise to those facilities and continue to operate them as they are. Yes, the diocese made the establishment in the community and now Allied Services will continue their work and grow it, make it big, make it prosperous for years to come. And most importantly, you're continuing with the residents, you're continuing with all the staff there as well. Absolutely. We made that commitment with the diocese when we reached the agreement to purchase the facilities, certainly to continue to operate them as they are, again, to bring our expertise to all those levels of care, but also we kept all the employees that wanted to stay with us, certainly some chose to retire, etc. But the great majority, nearly 400 employees, now will become employees of Allied Services, uh, bringing our numbers of employment in this community to an excess of 4,000 employees. So we're one of the largest employers in northeastern and central Pennsylvania, but again, it's always about community with Allied. This is in the heart of Wilkes-Barre. You're going to establish yourself as part of the neighborhood, helping all of Wilkes-Barre, the city, branching out into Luzerne County. That's what Allied does best. Thank you. That's, that really is our commitment. That's our mission. That's the difference with a not-for-profit health care system. Part of our mission is not only the care that we provide, but also the strength in the communities where we operate. And we're really thrilled to be in this part of Wilkes-Barre. We, of course, have our campus in Wilkes-Barre, the John Hines campus on Monday Street, but now we uh, move into another section of Wilkes-Barre and we look forward to continuing to grow these operations and to supporting the community and our employees and the people we care for. And always good to see a business growing and prospering in northeastern Pennsylvania and doing well. And I'm sure this isn't the end. I'm sure down the road we'll have more announcements because Allied is always growing. But for now, exciting news this week. And I know there's, there's a lot of uh, thrills around the Allied Services community. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Okay, Bill Conaboy, the president of Allied Services. They're growing and expanding. And this week the announcement is in Wilkes-Barre. We thank them for their support all season long. And we'll be back with the second half of football right here on Friday Night Rivals on my TV WQMY. Imagine getting a nurse's aid scholarship and tuition assistance while getting paid as a CNA. Allied Services has excellent career opportunities for RNs, LPNs, and CNAs. Visit allied-services.org slash careers today. What I liked about Keystone is the flexible schedules. When I chose to go to Keystone, I chose to be a resident student even though I lived close to campus. Keystone was a perfect fit for me. It truly felt like family and still is today. I chose Keystone College and then I chose to start my own business. I chose Keystone College and Atlantic Emergency Associates chose me. I chose Keystone College and then I started my own business. Attend Open House, Saturday, October 19th. Students and parents, register at keystone.edu. What do you have for us, ad man? More like ad baby. This is how we're going to show America that Blackish is on five nights a week. Let's show them how I'm crushing the mom game. How was school today? <laughs> the funniest thing happened. Oh. What? Those children are something special. <laughs> show your parenting yeah. expertise. What? Or how you're such a loving son to your mother. Shake, shake, shake up the love. Great ideas, guys. We're so good at this. Weeknights at 6 and 6.30 on CW38. We make a good team. World's finest. Batwoman, followed by Supergirl. Sunday night at 8 on CW38. Judge Mathis always delivers justice. You made a fool out of yourself. Have a good night. Monday at 5 on My TV WQMY. Hey, Jets, Thursday's coming. Thursday night? Barry Cowboy. Yeah! Thursday. Mahomes. One hit wonder. All day. Thursday night? Billy's coming for that chatter. Sorry, Billy. Juju. Juju. <laughs> Thursday night? <laughs> Our town belongs to us. 
can't hope for safety. It's our job to deliver it. Weeknights at 6 on My TV WQMY. Imagine getting a nurse's aid scholarship and tuition assistance while getting paid as a CNA. Allied Services has excellent career opportunities for RNs, LPNs, and CNAs. Visit allied-services.org slash careers today. Well, the crowd battling the cold weather tonight. They're all bundled up as Berwick leads Dallas 12-7. to Before the game, our friends from Allied Services, Bernie Strobel, the executive director, the outpatient services, presented a $250 check to the athletic director here, Mike Richards from Dallas. We thank the Dallas Mountaineers for having us here for our Friday Night Rivals game of the week. We bring it back into the booth. Bob Ide along with Jan Sechak. We're going to have some coaches walking by, so don't worry about They're that busy. for Dallas. They got, it, they got, they got things to do. to do. But let's talk about that first half. Berwick's come to play tonight. Um, they've held the ball pretty well. They convert it, and they have a pick six, which is really leading to their 12 points. And again, surprise, Tegan Wilk sets up for his 19th uh, touchdown. And again, his third for this year, and a touchdown return. Uh, return uh then the offense ryan lawball has been the key to their offensive success tonight and he's taken matters into his own hands and he's doing a tremendous job and uh, on the defensive side berwick has shut down lenny kelly and forking forcing mike starbuck to beat them well they figured out a formula and it's working for the bulldogs defense right now those defensive events they have out there are pitching so hard they're squeezing the interior of the bulldogs defensive line 280 pounds average they're shutting them down cold yeah, Kelly with 11 rushes is 50 yards plus a fumble. So let's take a look at those first half highlights. And it was that pick six from Berwick and Tegan Wilk that got things started 42 yards. He just looked that ball right in. Right? And what's right, impressive we'll is that he does that spin coach. move at the end to get into the end zone to give Berwick their first lead. Then Dallas has a nice 80-plus yard drive, and hey, Michael Starbuck does the honors. And the offensive line, great surge, gets up underneath the Bulldog interior to allow Michael Starbuck that touchdown. That was their best drive of the night. And Ryan Laubach, uh, well, maybe an inadvertent pass, but really this was like a punt. It was. Again, it gave uh, the Dallas Mountaineers field position at the 27-yard line, and they just couldn't do anything with it. But they do get the ball back towards the end of the half. They convert a short field. Uh, to, into points, and that's where they have the 12-7 lead. So let's go down to Paul Grippy now. He's standing by with the Berwick head coach, uh, Carm DeFrancesco. And, Paul, what does Coach have to say about the first half? Okay, Coach, we're about to start the third quarter. How do you feel about that five-point lead? Well, we feel good. We're, we're really kind of concerned about missing that extra point when we scored first, but we had a, a golden opportunity there right before the half and, and missed it, and uh, we were fortunate enough to get a, a second chance, and, and we're up by five, but that's a, a tenuous lead. We're going to have to play good defense. Do you like this kind of defensive scheme? I do. I do. Absolutely. We're in good shape. All right. Thanks a lot. Uh, Berwick coach Carmen Francesco, Bob, that was a tight first half and we're going to enjoy this second half. Thank you Paul. So a couple of numbers to throw at you. Dallas uh, overall has 121 yards of total offense. Just uh, 32 uh, on the ground. So Berwick they have 132 total offense. Uh, 64 and 68 more balanced attack. Very balanced and that's uh, again the arm and foot of Ryan Lawball in there. Doing a great job reading the defense and taking what they got. Yeah, Lawbach has uh, is what what he's uh, eight of eight, eight for 13, 68 yards, and rushed the ball for 32 yards. And he has that rushing touchdown. touchdown, which is giving the Bulldogs the lead. Well, this will be a big statement here. The Keystone College kickoff. Wilk from about the one has a gap. Tegan Wilk. A good return up past the 40 for the Bulldogs to bring that offense back on. Tegan Wilk is just a real cool customer back there. Very patient with his runs. Nice strides. He saw the vision of the field, took it, and gets great field position for Berwick to start the second half. Well, five times Berwick had the ball on the Dallas side of the field in that first half. They just converted only six points, though. And that's a uh, credit to Dallas's defense stiffening up and stopping them. Oh! Lawback turned around, couldn't hand it off. 
wisely jumps on it, not the start for the Bulldogs. On this, you'll just see just that RPO, he just pulled it out. Didn't quite have great position, obviously. Heads up play just to jump on it, not try to make anything worse happen. Oh, Berwick's lucky they got that one back. Good penetration from Dallas's interior too. Josh Belair and Andrew Molitaris. Laubach out and Wilk went one way. Laubach thought he was going another and falls incomplete. So third and long upcoming. Not a good offensive start for the Bulldogs. And that would seem to be like the Achilles heel for Berwick in the first half, that the receiver and quarterback were, were not in communication. So uh, hopefully they can clean that up if they're thinking about running into the States. So this will be a big stop for Dallas if they can get the back the ball. They'll move the ball up a little bit. So it's third, still third and long. Just beginning the third quarter here at Mountaineer Stadium. It's been a great game between two state-ranked teams. Laubach, the pressure, he's been known to run. He does, but Farrell pulls him down, and the punt team will be coming on. It's a nice job by the interior of Bolero Molitaris on this play. We don't see it, but they did a nice twist where they switched positions at the snap of the ball to try to confuse Berwick's offensive linemen. So Montez comes in, so a quick three and out for Berwick. Moransky and Delgadio back to receive, and Dallas should have good field position. Oh. Off the high snap, it's a squibber. Picked up at the 28 by Delgadio. Flag comes in after he goes out at the 39, so let's see what the flag is before we go Back down to the field. Chuck Supan is our referee from the Wyoming Valley Conference. Personal foul, blindside block, return team. Well, the new rule, the blindside block will back Dallas up. Penalties have hurt both teams tonight, haven't they? They really. They really have, and they've been almost key to this. But it's uh, you can't blame the officials on that. That call, they need to call that because they're trying to do the safety for the kids and the play. Well, obviously the players. Yeah. So this one backs it up to the Mountaineer, 25, down five in this game. Berwick lost to Valley View by seven. Dallas beat Valley View last week by 30. Boy, what a difference a week makes. Certainly does, especially when you have revenge and payback on your mind for Berwick. Kelly, nowhere to go against this stud defense Berwick throws at you. Just one yard. Mason Lawball on this. They go with the outside zone. They just stood him up. Number five right there. Does a great job for the Berwick Bulldogs. I, and we've said it all year, or all game, that this defense is pretty darn good, and they really are showing how good they are tonight. Yeah, they have two sacks on the night as well, and they've been in the backfield a lot. So they're going to force Starbuck to throw it. Four-man rush. He quickly gets it out, and it's his receiver for a Johnson College first down, and that is uh, Delgadio. On this play, they just go with the quarterback rolling to his left, and it just hits Del Gaudio, and a smart heads-up play to get that first down to keep Dallas in business. Starbuck listed at 5'10". I don't think he's that tall. He's with probably cleats on, like maybe. Maybe yeah. with cleats on. So they do want to roll him out and not put him in the pocket too much. And again, having a left-handed quarterback going to the left is to his strength. Here's the play action. He goes the other way. Good job by Muser to pull it down and get some positive yards. How about nine on that? On this play, they're setting up what we would call a flood pattern where you slip the fullback out into the flat, you have a medium, and then you have a long, and they did a good job taking away two, but not the third one, which is always your safety valve, the fullback out. 
Well, you want to find that mismatch, don't you? If you're Dallas uh, with the Berwick defense, there has to be that one mismatch you want to take advantage you would, of. You would think there is, but that defense that they have, that secondary back there, they're all tall and athletic. Another play action. He's going to go for it down the middle, and it goes incomplete. They hit, tried to hit Del Gaudio uh, against, uh, you know, Preston Robbins again. It's a uh, nice play to make sure that Berwick secondary doesn't start creeping up. They were starting to get nine guys, ten guys in the box to stop the run. So now they're saying we're going to air it out to try to take that pressure off. To try, maybe try to establish that run game for the Mountaineers. Well, he's, you know, coach is thinking I could get one yard, move the chains. That's, yeah, you know, I'll take that shot downfield. The Kelly. He's got the first down barely if they mark it. It looked like from my view, we'll see where they, they put the foot down. And the it officials is, are yeah. offset, but they're going to give him the – wait. Yeah, the line to gain was the 48. That's they're going to measure. No, they're going to give it to him. It's a Johnson College first down for Dallas. So they keep the drive going. And I think this is what Coach probably – Coach Manella talked to him at halftime about. Here we go. ISO play. He's following Muser up, and again, if he follows his block, I don't think it would have been as close as we ha had it on the field. Well, that's what you teach though, right? Absolutely, follow your block, read his head, and then go to where it is. And they get him going east to west. They talked about that in the keys to the games, and Berwick right there, well, maybe a yard loss for Kelly. Making him run to the sidelines, and that gives that fast pursuing Berwick defense a chance to react and make the stop. Well, Kelly coming in, remember, had 100 yards in every game this season so far. That's in jeopardy here tonight. Yeah, but he, they haven't played a Berwick no. type <laughs> defense week in and week out. And well, these kids, though, for, and again, Coach Manello, these kids haven't played, I don't believe, a full game because he is a firm believer in pulling his starters when the game is already taken care of in the first half. Well, there's a lot on the line tonight. In the district playoffs coming up in two weeks. Play action. Starbuck, I don't think no one's open. He'll have to keep it. He does. He's tripped up by Wilk and a yard loss. Trevor Wilk playing at that free safety spot has probably been his assignment this week would be to spy number seven. Wherever he goes, you go. And when he saw that it was a run play, he just comes up and drops him for a loss. Well, it was good secondary coverage, though, downfield as well. Uh, it was a coverage sack. Good discipline by the corners. Third along on the way for Dallas. Trailing by five in this one. 8-0 on the year. Number three in the state and 4A. Starbuck. Goes out and hits Delgadio. Good route from Delgadio, and he's going to be close to a Johnson College first down, and he has it at the 40 inside Berwick territory. Interesting series that the, the Mountaineers have come out passing predominantly this uh, in this series alone. Did you say passing? Yeah, I did say passing. <laughs> For a Richmond Hill team? For, yeah. Well, you know, after running... 51 times last week. You, you figured they have to throw a little they would, bit. And, and Bobby probably heard what you said, that they, in order to be successful in the playoffs, they're going to need to have a more balanced attack. Give it a muser. Check. Oh, it's a Luke goes right there. He shoots right in from the linebacker spot. A loss of one. Dallas Schechterly, boy, I'll tell you what. He read that and stuffed it. And again, they're trying to keep everybody honest. And I said earlier, they're going to give the ball to Danny Muser to do that. And Danny does a nice job accepting that role and responsibility and lead blocking for Lenny Kelly. Hard hitting game. Paul Grippy said they're really hitting each other out there. Just like the Valley View game at Berwick and I'm sure the Dallas Valley View game. Lots of the bodies are hitting the floor out there. Big boy football. Starbuck back. No pressure, going down the middle. Almost had five, he's looking for a penalty. Maybe he was held, it is not. And it'll be third down on the way. That's the second time Michael Starbuck has overthrown his receivers that have a step on it. 
and I'm not sure, again, a little bit of miscommunication, or they're just not used to really throwing the ball as much as they have been. Still no third down and long. For Dallas, they converted the last time on this drive. Time is ticking, coming up near the five minute mark already in the third quarter. Well, Dallas is gonna try to keep the ball away from Berwick, that's for sure. Starbuck with time again, set up a little screen. Dallas Schechterly says no, I see that. He takes down Muser for a three yard loss. Dallas Schechterly, he's, he sniffed that out right from the get start. Great assignment football, and he just wraps up and did not let go. Now we got the Berwick team starting to pursue there. That's why he's their, one of our scholar athletes. Play smart. Smart kid. Mm -hmm. Well, now the punt team is on. Burke just wants to pin them deep. I don't think I kick it to Teague and Wilk, but they do, and Wilk gets it from the 12. Wilk with a nice little gain, about you know 10, maybe 11, and this brings out the Berwick offense up by five. And Tinkett Wilk on that punt had a lot of poise and more importantly the patience to make sure he secured the ball and then he picked his spot and ran and, and got them out of a potentially deep, bad kick. Well, the Dallas defense last week, boy, they... We saw Janasa Boone. We know what, what kind of player he is. They held him to 39 yards rushing, just 114 passing. He had two interceptions. And the, Well, this week, I mean, who would you defend? You take Sheptock out, you take Wilk out, and then you got Lawbaugh, and then, oh, I'm sorry, the big tight end, too. Cleaver. So this is a very well-balanced team Berwick has. And here's the You'll see play. this. That was a run all the way. That was just the wildcat formation. Wilk checks off, takes it and runs, and they pull the backside tackle to lead block up through the inside. I know Berwick believes they should have won that Valley View game. They they beat themselves in that game as well. They did. Uh, again, with the penalties, just like we saw in the first half, Berwick was shooting themselves in the foot, but they came to play today. Lawbach keeps it for a couple of yard games, third down upcoming. So we knew we'd be a defensive battle, and it has been all night long. It's been tough going for these offenses. <laughs> uh, it's going to get tougher, yeah. especially with the state playoffs coming up and looming in there. Every team's good, and they're not going to have the, the easy games that they've had. Boy, if there's a three-way tie, it's going to come down to week number 10. <laughs> Lawback sneaks in, gets the corner, and a big hit put on Kelly by Lawback. Goes flying, but he's got a Johnson College first down. You'll see this. They run with that Veer option, and he kept keeps the ball. And Lenny Kelly, nice hit, pops him out of bounds. It's going to be interesting, Bobby. You said about next week, if this comes to fruition for Berwick. Berwick actually might get the power points because they're playing a 6A school with Wilkes-Barre well, next Well, Valley View's beating Scranton tonight. That's a 6A school True. as well. Of course, Dallas will take Lake Lehman in their battle of the back mountain, and Wilk, nice blocking. Wilk with a nice gain of nine. It's an interesting article that they wrote about Teagan Wilk. On this play, again, the Wildcat, they're putting it, the ball in the pl best player's hands, and let's make this outcome happen. Good block up there. If anything, they're keeping Dallas away from getting the ball, and that's what you want, just keep the that's clock rolling. They're, and they're going to turn the field over as well, Berwick. You know, even if they get to the 50. They're going to be, this is going to be an uphill battle. This fourth quarter is going to be really, really interesting. Oh. Dallas reads the option. Kelly shoots in. He says, also says, you know, I know that's coming. <laughs> Third and short coming up. That was a loss of one. Right, you know, we talked about 42 and number seven, and they, they've lived up to the hype tonight. They have. Uh, these are two great programs, two great teams, battling it out for the District 4, or District 2 Quad A Championship. I mean, we've seen two great previews, Bob. Valley View. Berwick, 
And now we're seeing another one with Dallas and Berwick. So a power formation for Berwick. They give the ball off and he first down and more inside Mountaineer territory goes Tegan Wilk. He hit that hole and he went for a Johnson College first Again, down. It, they just they went with that jumbo set or elephant set, whatever. You, you see the two fullback tight end types up there and they just paved the way for that hard running, get the eight yards for the first down. Good block by Eric Montez, you know, in there on the, on the wing. Number 42. 6'1", 235 pounds. He's a and big boy. He is. Well, they're going to stay in that power formation. Wilk nowhere to go. Better defense there. Clock's still ticking. Just coming up on a mini here in the third quarter. Nobody has scored a point here in this half so far. It's 12-7 at the half. That's the way it remains. That formation that Berwick's coming out, it reminds me of back in the 1990s when Central Bucks West and Mike Pettin Sr. That was his bread and butter formation. You knew what they were going to run. You just couldn't stop it. And the one thing they did was they would run a counter trap with that inside up back that would kill you. Well, they fake it, and Laubach keeps it. So third and long upcoming. And it will be the last play of the quarter right there. So the third down play will have to wait for quarter number four. It's going to be a great finish here in the back bottom. Stay with us. The score remains Berwick 12 and Dallas 7. Following an injury, clients are often unaware of the options available to protect them and their families. Having represented thousands of clients and recovered millions of dollars for injury victims, there is really only one way a client can make an informed decision, to be advised of the best options available while pursuing a claim. Knowing what is best for you as the client assures me, as your attorney, that I achieve the best result for you in your time of need. Legal advice when in need, figured law firm for you and your family. Welcome back to Mountaineer Stadium, everyone. Bob Ion, C-Check, Paul Grippian during a great Wyoming Valley Conference game between Berwick and Dallas. And the crowd on hand in pink tonight, ready to cheer their Mountaineers on. They trail by five. And Dallas with, excuse me, Berwick with the ball in a third and long. Laubach over the middle, and it's intercepted. He tried to hit Cleaver. He threw it in the traffic. And it's picked off, his second INT, and it is Lenny Kelly. Why not? <laughs> he has been everywhere. What, uh, I mean, that coverage was so tight, and the ball actually was thrown with precision in there. That was just great heads up play by Lenny Kelly. Gives, may, might give the spark the Mountaineers need. Uh, it, it almost looked like he knew the, where it was going. I mean, that's good coaching. They watch film. That's being a disciplined linebacker, not vacating your area and just understanding the scheme that the defense coordinator has set for the team. Starbuck, and it's picked off by Montez. What a play. Tipped it up into the air and caught it. This Berwick defense comes up big again. Coach DeFrancesco was saying how he was really impressed with his two defensive ends. Eric Montez does a great job. Defensive ends dream, tip the ball, block it, and then pick it off. Heads up, Mike Starbuck. Wow. Another angle. Look at this. Again, he gets his hands oh. on it. Great, great concentration on the ball. His first interception of the year. And a huge one for Montez. 
Berwick has the ball at the Dallas 31-yard line. Up by five, and I think they're going to call timeout. They do. They're we'll trying this one again on the Luzerne County replay. Oh, this is great to have this angle. Great job by the production guys in here. And you just see that tip, good concentration. Right now, I know Coach uh, Manello called timeout. He's just trying to settle Michael Starbuck down because I'm sure right now that young man feels like everything, it's his fault right now for this I entire game. I think Berwick game. called that. I, I thought he pointed towards Berwick, Did if I'm mistaken. Okay. All right, thank you. Berwick did call that timeout. Yep. So they wanted to get things straight. That could be the play of the night from Eric Montez. Or Toyota play of the night. A big interception. Can Berwick convert, though? Double reverse. Oh, flea flicker. They're going to go downfield. And it's, oh, in and out of the hands of Sheptock. He had it, and he had a step on the defender. Now we know why they called timeout. Why? <laughs> <laughs> you know, with all the trick plays that you want to implement, this is great. Hand double reverse, here it is. Back to your quarterback. Sean Sheptock had him beat. Wow. He had it. That was the right call. At and the right time. Sheptock just dropped it. It was as simple as that. The junior had it in his hands. They're going to go to the air again. Out quickly, and it's inter incomplete. So the clock stops again. R.J. Rent did a nice job of closing that cushion and then hitting a nice, getting a nice solid hit on that. So the Dallas defense getting a break, and they need to come up big. They have to keep them off the board. Even a field goal. Crowell getting back into it. Here in the back mountain. Laubach looking towards the left, looking, has a hole. Farrell comes over to shut that down quickly, just a gain of four. That's one thing that Dallas's defense has been sus suspect in all night is they're dropping their linebackers, inside linebackers out, and it's creating that void, and all ball seeing that, and he's taking advantage of it. Jack Farrell read it, though. Shot over to the junior. That's a big stop. So on fourth down, Berwick is going to go for it at the 28-yard line. Laubach looking left the whole time. Still looking. Holds it too long and he's taken down. Great job by the Dallas secondary for that coverage sack and that relentless pursuit with that defensive line. Xander Shaner coming up at that defensive end spot. Here we go. He's looking, 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 looking. Lots of, he at the time, he's trying to direct guys downfield. And Xander Shaner, again, the 6'2", 220-pound senior, gets a nice sack and, more importantly, stops him on that fourth down. Boy, how many times have Berwick had chances tonight and they just couldn't take advantage of them? They're lucky they're up five. They could be up a lot more. They really could be. And Coach Steve Francesco also said at the Valley View game, he felt that they kept stopping themselves. So Starbuck turns up and he... Hits Delgatti over the middle. Still on his feet. Down to the 16-yard line. That's a huge play in many aspects. Michael Starbuck comes back. He's cool under pressure. Great pass to Delgadio. But what's more important is that Coach Manello and the rest of the Dallas Mountaineers have that confidence in Mike after that interception. That's a great, great play and a way to get the Dallas Mountaineers back into this game. 40-yard gain. Coach Manello pulling out all the stops here tonight. Who knew that four-letter word pass was in the repertoire? It is tonight. And Kelly back with the ball. He's got room. Kelly shoots out. And it's a figure-long touchdown for the Dallas Mountaineers. <laughs> 17-yard run for Lenny Kelly. Puts Dallas back out in front. 
on this play. There we go. We just have a wraparound. It's the power play, number 76 for Dallas. Pulls, wraps up inside following the fullback. That's a great job. Josh Blair let that up inside. Lenny Kelly just bringing it in. He's just so happy. You can see he's looking up. He's just like, yes. They'll go for two. They're going to run a flea flicker themselves, going over to Starbuck. And he's got it for the two-point conversion. The bag of tricks are coming out here, the back mountain. We got the Manello special right there. <laughs> the Manello special, the two-point conversion is good. Look at this. <laughs> Double reverse, here we go. This is unbelievable. But that will take a timeout. Three-point lead, 10-29 left in this game. Dallas takes the lead back. Hi, I'm Andrew Krivak, an accounting specialist here at Net Credit Union. Net Credit Union has a team of credit score experts ready to help you. Establishing a high credit score is important. Your credit score dictates the interest you'll pay on your loans. A low score can prevent you from being approved for the money you need. The higher the score, the lower the risk. The lower the risk, the more money you save. Did you know your car insurance is based off your credit score? We may be able to help raise your credit score, lower your monthly payments, and eliminate high interest debt. NET is proud to be a supporter of tonight's community event. There's so much more you get when you bank on NET. NET is federally insured by the NCOA and an equal opportunity lender. Visit netcreditunion.com slash credit score for more information. Momentum shifts back to the Mountaineers here in the fourth quarter. They go two plays, they take it down the field, the two-point conversion on the Manello special. And it's a three-point lead for Dallas. More importantly, Bob, that defensive series where they stopped them on that fourth and goal. Keystone College kickoff. Fisher's a squibber. And it's taken up to the 30-yard line. State Farm offers solutions to help you live life confidently. Get your fast, free quote. Call Melissa at 570-675-6960 or visit myshavertownagent.com for 24-7 service. State Farm is here to help life go right. What is Berwick thinking now? They've had so many opportunities tonight to put this one away. But their defense couldn't hold the passing game down for Dallas. Now the offense has a chance again, but the defense for Dallas is feeling that momentum. Shaner in there again as Laubach went on a keeper. Xander Shaner did a nice job of staying home. They tried running speed sweep to set up the quarterback coming up inside Laubach, and he just did a tremendous job with his discipline, playing his assignment and making the stop. Last year in the regular season, 13-10 Dallas. 3-0 in the playoffs. A three-point lead right now. <laughs> Can it get any closer between these two teams? I think not. Will trying to fight anything. Trying to come back. Spins, and he's going to be close to a Johnson College first down. That's, well, that was all Tegan Wilk. That was, and that's just the good awareness, football awareness. Set it up on the speed sweep. Had a lead block, number 16 out there, lead blocking for him. Did, there was nothing there from the Dallas D. One yard short, one yard short. Lobach keeps it, he takes the ball. Lose the ball. The ball's on the turf and it's recovered by Moransky. Boy, was he down. They're going to say he's down. Lobach got smacked, though. I'm telling you, that was a big hit. Look at this. A quarterback sneak in here. Watch this. Just bang. Lenny Kelly. I'm not sure what the officials were 
having any discussion about. Well, the ball's going to stay in Berwick's hands, but they may have lost their quarterback. On that was that, almost he's a come out, hit. He's got to come out for one play, and if they're smart, they're going to keep him out for this the rest of this game. Quarterback sneak comes in. There was nothing. I mean, there was no bad hit. It's just his head hit the carpet. I didn't see his knee down. That ball came out before the knee came down. No replay in high school football. Everything happens back on the field. Berwick retains possession. Tegan Wilk now taking the snap. So Berwick gets a break. And Wilk takes it up to the 45-yard line. Dallas has to have very short memory now. They We'll slow it down. I think we'll try and slow it down. I don't see his knee down. The ball the came ball, out. His the knee ball was, was out. The ball was out. Well, again, we go on. And that's what I was saying. Dallas has to have a short memory. Yep. They can't really nope. worry about that. They just have to stop him now. Refereeing is not an easy job. Lawbach is back in. They give it to Will. And he goes nowhere. I just wonder how shaken up uh, Lawbach is. That was a big hit. That was. The way that his body Kelly. hit the carpet, that's what the, I think the stunning was. But he looks like his composure is pretty good right now. In the other game of importance, Valley View is holding on to a 14-7 lead over Scranton. Five minutes left in that one at Memorial Stadium in downtown Scranton. Lawbach out quickly, overthrows. Mauer and Wilk was also there. Third down upcoming, no. Fourth down on the way. Still 724 left. I think you punt it. Let your defense stop them. Let your de yeah, make them earn the win. In this game though, Bob, I wouldn't be surprised to see a fake punt at this point. Dallas's defense does his job. Montez with a low kick and it goes out of bounds. It's not a very good kick at all. And they'll place the ball up, yeah, I'd say near the the 40 yard line. I haven't seen where the ball is placed. 35 maybe? 35, yep. So Bur uh, Dallas has the ball, 718, three point lead. Berwick's high. They've been success. They, uh, they've been potent to lead, giving up the pass. 181s to Valley View over through the air. Uh, well, I don't have in front of me, but they've been able to throw the ball as well. I, that's the one thing that they've been suspect on all year. Well, Lenny Kelly now is finding room. Kelly cuts back. Still on his feet. Lenny Kelly. Schechter League finally grabs him, but he's Inside the five. Well, we talked earlier. Here we go. The Dallas offensive line opening up a huge hole for Lenny Kelly to get all that yardage, all that second, fourth effort that he had, the juke and spinning. That's a great job to set the Dallas Mountaineers up deep in Berwick territory. Uh, when's the last time you saw a Berwick deep? rush attack, rush defense, excuse me, give up a big play like that. 62-yard run by Lenny Kelly, and we talked about him being over the 100-yard mark. He's close to that, being over 100 yards. I, I think we may have insulted him yeah, or maybe, maybe. Motivated, how's that, motivated him to get that. <laughs> Inside the Allied Services red zone, Dallas trying to put this one away, and it's a figure-law touchdown for who else? Number 42. Lenny Kelly on the ISO right in here. Coach Minnell's key to the game was stick to the game plan. And that's what exactly what they've done there. ISO. Now again, I'm going to give Danny Muser a lot of props for that. As a fullback, his job on that play is just to blow up the linebacker. And he did that to allow Lenny Kelly to get in there pretty much untouched for the touchdown. We have a shaken up Berwick player getting stretched out. 
Boy, boy, this offense has exploded here in the last two possessions for the Mountaineers. They trailed 12 to seven going into the fourth quarter. They scored right now 14 straight, including a two point conversion. With the Manila special in there, that was pretty, pretty impressive. And then uh, Dallas came out though in that series where they scored and Bob, they were passing. <laughs> I know, I'm shocked. <laughs> But you know who's happy? You know, there's a lot of smiles on the sidelines. Why not? And it's our Casey smile cam. And Paul Grippy's in the middle of it. Okay, so, yeah, everyone here is wearing pink. And this is the Casey Dano smile cam. Someone's got a horn there. They're getting ready. And they're wearing pink tonight because it is the pink out game. Casey Dental Smile Cam. This game's over. Is someone taking a selfie of Paul? <laughs> what a big smile. Casey right, he's smile a, cam. he's a legend in his happened. own mind. Well, he's keeping warm, too. It's a little bit chilly outside. Uh, Mike Saluco was shaken up. He was stretched out. He walked off the field for Berwick, so we're happy he's okay. Ryan Fisher is on for the uh, PAT to extend this Dallas lead. The left footer is up and through. We'll take a quick timeout, 6.36 remaining in the game. Now's the time to hit the trail in a new RAV4 and go big with model year-end savings. It's go time at Toyota. So take your adventures to a new level. Lease a RAV now for $239 a month or buy with 1.9% APR or get up to 1,000 total cash allowance. It's go time at Toyota. Visit your local dealer and test drive one today. Toyota, let's go places. Off the Keystone College kickoff, Keegan Wilk brings it up to the 42-yard line. Berwick back on the field, trailing now by 10 points here at Dallas. At Quad A Driving Academy, our students do not have to go to the DMV to take their test. They test with us. Less stress means a higher pass rate. We're the only full-service driving training school able to serve Lizard, Lackawanna, and nearby counties. Check us out at quadadrive.com. Bob Adian, see check Paul Grippy here. Uh, incomplete pass by Berwick stops the clock. We talked about momentum. Berwick had it going into the half, couldn't sustain it. Dallas somehow found it here in the fourth quarter. They really did, and they've turned a momentum key on, and they've put their foot on the accelerator, and they keep it, they're keep they putting the pressure now on Berwick. Well, we talked about what team would wear down, and it looks like Berwick's getting a little tired. They really do. They're, they're getting a little bit back on their heels, a little bit not as polished as they should be right now, and I know Coach DeFrancesco is probably feeling a little bit of frustration. Well, they've had opportunities. There's no they've doubt. They've had plenty. If you watch plenty. this entire game, they had the ball on the Mountaineer side of the ball uh, field five, six times already. And they've had great field position yeah. to start drives. But again, give credit to Dallas's defense for stopping them and keeping that game as close as it was. Well, the Berwick offense needs something here. Lawback pressure put on in his face, and he take it down for the sack. By Taylor Ballesta, the six foot, 225 pound defensive end. Nothing going right for Berwick now. Secondary coverage, look at that. Great pursuit with the arms, 
extended, his feet moving. He pushed the offensive lineman back into the quarterback, sheds him for the sack. We saw Aaron Cashman hit, him, hit himself. He knew he let off that block too early. So the ball back to the 31-yard line. The crowd really get into it. Dallas trying to remain undefeated. Going into the, sh what, the shoe game next week? Uh, the old brown shoe. Oh, brown shoe, yep. It. And it's caught. Great catch by Maurer. And it'll be fourth down. And call it about eight. Blake Maurer really is having a great night. Reminds me of a, like, uh, back with the Patriots, Wes Welker. He just yeah. gets that slot position open, and he makes things happen and brings them back into uh, fourth and seven right now. Berwick needs this one to keep the drive going and have any chance. It's starting to get away from the Bulldogs. Laubach being chased from behind. Ball. Ball's on the turf. Farrell caused a fumble. And the Mountaineers have it. That may have sealed the season so far for the Mountaineers. Shader comes up with it. That Jack Farrell came right off that edge so fast that he just, he, I watched the strip on here. Nice job by Jack Farrell to get that sack, strip sack, and then who gets the recovery? Number 52, Xander Shaner. We've said his name a lot for the defense for the Mountaineers this evening. Well, we talked we talk about the Berwick. We mentioned in the pregame. Don't underestimate this Dallas defense, and they have come here to play. And the second half, they've they've really have shown what they can do. No points given up to Berwick. Dallas trying to do anything. They'll keep the clock rolling as Kelly just goes down. Well, longtime assistant coach for uh, Coach Manel, Nick Amatrano, was always a proponent, especially when it was at Kings, to try to get the pass game going. And I, I'm sure right now Coach Amatrano is happy with that one drive that they went down passing and then they, they got that go-ahead touchdown. Well, I mentioned to you, Berwick wanted to stop Kelly, forced Starbuck to throw the ball, and the receivers, Delgadio Moransky, and, 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 and Muser did a nice job. They've done a great job tonight. And again, the patience that the Dallas Mountaineers entire team has had this evening. They've, they haven't hit the panic button. They haven't, but Lenny Kelly's found the hole. It's picked out. It's in the end zone. It's recovered by Berwick, and it will be a touchback. Well, Coach Francesco talked about uh, this week that he wanted to work on strip sacks and punching at the ball, and this is a classic textbook punch. Lenny Kelly has a great run. Tegan Wilk. Yep, Tegan Wilk comes up from behind. He's secured, and he punched with that right hand. That's why the ball went flying into the end zone. Preston Robbins, <laughs> that's Coach Robbins' son, does a tremendous job with the recovery. Well, a break for Berwick, if anything. They get the ball back. 354, trailing by 10. T. Wilk, he's done what he's had to do tonight. Ryan Laubach's played really good. I don't envy you, uh, Mr. I, trying to find out who the MVP would be. Say if we had to pick it for Berwick. For Berwick? <laughs> for Berwick, who would you pick? Probably Laubach. He's going to throw it up and out of bounds. I mean, Tegan Wilk has been everywhere, as Laubach has been also. The Dallas defense has to answer the bell one more time. Stop this Berwick team right now. Try to keep Pinnelman deep. Oh, by the way, Preston Robbins is not Coach Robbins' son. Oh, it's not? No. Ro Coach Robbins has younger sons. Okay. <laughs> I apologize to the Robbins family. So Laubach uh, into the ground. Trying to hit Tegan Wilk. It brings up third down. So, again, Dallas takes on Lake Lehman. Berwick has a tough one at home against Wilkesbury. And Valley View will check on that score with Scranton. They were winning by seven. The 
Valley View has North Pocono next week. 21-14. Valley View. Yep. Fourth quarter. Third, 3.59 remaining. Double pump and overthrows Wilk on third down. Had him open. But great pressure put on by Dallas. Number 75 for the Mountaineers. Taylor Balesta just did a nice job with that shoulder rub, keeping his outside arm free to get that up, arm up and in the face of the quarterback. So Coach Carm's gonna bring on the punt team. Montez. It gets by Moransky, but at this point, it's wise to just let it go. It'll be down about the 26 yard line. State Farm offers solutions to help you live life confidently. Get your fast, free quote from Call Melissa at 570. 675-6960 or visit myshavertownagent.com for 24-7 service. State Farm is here to help life go right. Things are definitely going right for the Mountaineers. They trail 12-7 going into the fourth quarter. They put up 15 unanswered to seal this game. Now they just have to run out the clock. Kelly's finding holes that you just never really see against Berwick. He shoots through for about 12. Especially with those two big boys that the Berwick Bulldogs have inside. Sullivan Slabinski at uh, 237 pounds and Anthony Sisko, the senior at 205 pounds, the, that have played that those positions for the last two and a half years. Ethan Hughes, 271, a junior, has been in there as well, number 61. He just came off the field. So if anything, this will push the uh, defense of rushing for Berwick up. It was 22 yards a game coming in. Well, and again, they have a uh, they haven't seen a running back like Lenny Kelly either. We talked about Kelly being sore after last week's game. What's he going to feel like tonight? He's going to feel pretty darn good if they're fortunate enough to win this game with two and a half minutes to go. Don't count out Lake Lehman as well. They have a, a nice record, you know, no. six and two going into tonight. Anything can happen in those rivalry games. You throw throw the records out. You really do. Um, when Coach Manello took over, I believe <laughs> they weren't having a very good year, and they won that game. So, uh, and Coach Gilski, he knows the importance of this game because of the close rivalry that these two communities have. It looks like Valley View will pull this one out, 28 to 14 over Scranton. So if things play out, as Kelly gets it again, Dallas uh, just going to leave it on the ground. Uh, Dallas will remain undefeated. Valley View has one loss. Berwick will have two losses. And if it stays like that going into the following week, Dallas will be the top seed in the District 2 for a standings. That's the key. They want the home game. They do. And, and they deserve it. They've been working their tails off. If for four years. Coach for four years and this is and they won't be satisfied just with one winning districts they want to go deep into the states as all teams do uh, you know coach D Francesco right now is probably thinking okay let's get let's regroup and let's get ready for the playoff run and I'll tell you I don't think I'd want to be that team that has to play Berwick because they're gonna come out and make a statement in the playoffs well if it is Valley View and Berwick again whew. And Berwick thinks they should have, they won the last game. I mean, it's going to be a tough game either way. It's going to be, a, again, great high school football, Northeast Pennsylvania style. You know, Valley View wants another shot at Dallas. I mean, oh. giving up 37 to them. And, and putting a blemish on their undefeated record. Well, they are the two-time champs were Cougars. Well, this is the year that Dallas uh, circled. Parents were talking about it, talking to their kids. I mean... This is the year that they thought, this is it. They, had, they started as freshmen, built this program up. This is the year they wanted and needed to win the district title. 
and it's, I spoke with Coach Manel before the game, and he was saying how this is just such an extraordinary group of young men, how they like to practice, which is unheard of. They like to get in the weight room, and that has, and that has transpired now to all the underclassmen, and even all the way down to the Bobcats, I believe, the Back Mountain yep. Bobcats, which is the Pee Wee Football League. They're all doing the same thing here so that these – kids will keep the success going that a storied program like Berwick has done for years Dallas had that now they're getting back to it so hats off to these guys uh, for setting the mark high let's check our schedule Jan uh, next week we'll be back in the Lackawanna football conference and Lakeland taking a Dunmore lot of playoff ramifications in those games Dunmore trying to take the top seed in double-a Lakeland trying to hang on they're into the 3a playoffs but they want to improve their seed. And then we have a week off before we take the playoffs. And on the field, there's a timeout, by the way. So, And then uh, Jan and I will enjoy some college football, the Mayor's Cup again. <laughs> the closest rivalry in the country. The yep. One city block. If that now. It, it, uh, it, I think they're it. intertwined. It, yeah, almost. <laughs> so it will be Wilkes at Kings this year. We, we can enjoy that as well. So, well, time flies. We talk about that going into the season. The, and next week is the last game of the regular season. Uh, and, Bob, we said at the beginning, I can't believe this is week nine no. already. I, I mean, we've had great Friday night rival games week in and week out. Uh, credit to the prognosticator of prognosticators. Well, I don't know about Mr. that. Mr. Robert Ide <laughs> for picking great games and, and giving the fans what they want. Great high school football on Friday nights. Our, I'll tell you, our production crew, when I saw that we have a game on the 15th and then they have to come back out Saturday on the 16th, a uh, lot of credit to those guys for doing that. Well, it's actually a four game in, four games in seven days for us. We have a Bucknell basketball game in the middle there as well. <laughs> well, at least so they're now, inside for that, This is right? the top crew in the state, and they're top crew for a reason. They really are. It's a quality production every week and every game we go to. We've had a good schedule, another timeout. Uh, we, we've been lucky this year. We've had some good games. I mean, the Tunkhannock game, they came back. Uh, the Hazelton game, yep. they came back and won. Uh, even last week's game, with uh, Paul was in and, uh, stand, um, they had a very competitive game. We've seen some good football here in Friday Night Rivals. It will continue next week and into the playoffs. You and... Saturday means one thing, and that's college football. Starting at 11 is the Fox College pregame show. Then at noon, West Virginia takes on unbeaten number five, Oklahoma, followed by a Big 12 conference matchup of Baylor and Oklahoma State. Saturday college football on Fox 56. Beautiful punt. And fair catch by Tegan Wilkin, why not? Burgess with a nice punt. Uh, so speaking of Dunmore, quickly, Western Wayne beat them tonight, 42 to 28. So, I, I, and I know Riverside beat Montrose, and again, it's going to come down to next week. Dunmore has to win to take that top seed. They lose to Lakeland, and Riverside beats Montrose, uh, beats uh, uh, Northwest, Northwest. Excuse me. Riverside could jump them for the top seed in Double A. So a lot of great things happening in. Northeastern Pennsylvania, still a lot to play for next there week is. in week number 10. I mean, single A, Old Forge Trail. I mean, double A, triple. Uh, it's crazy how good Northeast football is. It's going to be very competitive playoffs, no doubt, this year. Uh, I believe Cleaver is now taking over at quarterback. Which is not unusual because he is the backup Q. Yep. At yeah, number nine. So they throw the ball. That stops the clock. It's a long 130 left in this game. Uh, and Coach, was. Coach Mel took those two timeouts, especially the fourth down, trying to hard count, try to get Berwick to jump to give them the first so they could have uh, sealed the deal. If you're Berwick, you just want a chance. And they've had, they had them tonight. They just couldn't convert. As Cleaver sends it down and it's intercepted. Number that 17. will certainly do it. That's Jacob a, Esposito, Esposito on the interception. Yep. And it looks like Dallas will take the Friday Night Rivals trophy home. They'll tr play for another trophy next week against Lake Lehman and then the 
Next trophy they want will be a district title. Absolutely. That's why these young men do this starting in November with the weight room if they get eliminated early. 23rd meeting between these two teams. Berwick owns a 16-6 advantage. They won <laughs> seven straight up till last year. Three games, though, Dallas has won over Berwick. The last three games. Well, the Mountaineers have had the Bulldogs number then, the, obviously, the last two years. But it won't mean anything if we can't, if they don't get out of the way. That's right. If they don't. Both teams still in the hunt for a district title. The Dallas faithful, I'll tell you what, the stands are still filled. They're starting to trickle out now with 40 seconds in running. So Old Forge wins over Northwest, almost eliminating North Northwest in the playoffs. Uh, they have to check the trail score, but they don't play next week. Prep beats Lakeland, Western Wayne wins, Valley View wins as well. So that will do it. What a comeback by the Dallas Mountaineers. Trailing going into the fourth quarter. They score 15 unanswered, and they win by 10. Paul Grippy will be down on the sidelines for our Allied Services Players of the Game. I'm sure he tried to grab Coach Manello, but he probably <laughs> took right off. Uh, for as happy I, I as really Coach wanted, Manello will be. I, I want to know how... how we, we love Rich Manello. Yes, we do. How I, hard was it to call passes tonight? He really, I mean, he that passing game actually opened up the running game. And it, it opened up the game for Dallas, yeah. that they could actually relax a little bit and do what they had to do, which is give the ball to Lenny Kelly to run it out. And the um, offensive line came up big when they needed to. They had to. But let's talk about the defense. Yeah. When they were pinned in in this first half, three times they Berwick had the ball on the – Dallas side of the field, and they stiffened up and didn't allow them to score. So, uh, you know, the un unsung hero, Dallas defense. Okay, Paul has tracked our players of the game. Dallas, okay, out of Dallas you. gets the win, and I have the Allied Services players of the game for Dallas. First, running back Lenny Kelly. Tell me about this game and that defense for Berwick. How did that uh, affect your offense tonight? Uh, in the beginning, we were a little slow, but once we got the hang of it, we stayed with smooth sailing from there. You guys did trail for most of this game. How did you put that big come from behind win together? Uh, we worked way too hard in the offseason to lose to a team this year, sir. What does it mean to beat Berwick like this, 10-point win? It's huge, especially at home and beating three times in a row. That's huge for us. Okay, congratulations also, Allied Services player of the game. I have Xander Shaner with me. 9-0, um, and 0. what's 9-0 and 0 mean to your Dallas football team? Oh, it's amazing. It's, uh, I think this is like the first time we've gone undefeated since 2010. It's uh, amazing. We put so much work in, and it's just an amazing feeling. And now you're in the driver's seat for the district with one game to go. You put back-to-back -back wins uh, together against Valley View and Berwick. What does that say about your team to the rest of the district? Um, I don't really know. Uh, we're just working work to week right now, week to week. And uh, we're going to focus on Lehman, and we're going to go day by day. You're having such a great season, undefeated. Do you remember back freshman year, two wins that season? How have you come along with the program over four years? Uh, we, Basically, in my thought, we've been thinking, go and work hard in the weight room, work hard on the field, and go day by day. That's my saying, day by day. Okay, congratulations, Xander Shaner, an Allied Services player of the game. This is the Allied Services Friday Night Rivals Trophy. I'm going to give it, and you show it to the rest of your team, and you enjoy this win. Congratulations. All right, thank, you. thank you. All right, Lenny and Xander, the Allied Services players of the game, Bob. Well, Xander's going to take right, that trophy a long run down to the end zone, but a happy Mountaineer team being talked to by Coach Manello. There's still one game left. It's a big game. They have to win that to definitely clinch the top seed in District 2A. It's just a win. He'll tell you that. It's on to the next week starting tonight at midnight. <laughs> I don't. For, for, I know Coach Manello, it won't start at midnight. It'll start at uh, – what time right now. It'll start at 10 o'clock. Yeah. He'll give them the half hour to enjoy it. Um, again, he's going to tell them to enjoy this one, see your family, you know, 
be thankful for everything that we've been given and how hard we work for it and how we have to continue what our goal has been said for the last three years. Okay, back Berwick, they have to be Wilkes-Barre. You want to keep that three seed. Um, you still have opportunities. And, again, just like the Valley View game, they beat themselves. They really did. The penalties in that first half mm -hmm. killed them. They had great field position and then uh, a, an undisciplined penalty to get 10 yards taken off. It's just tough to overcome that. Again, they are high school kids. Uh, Tegan Wilk did everything he could in his power to try to help this team, as did, surprisingly, I thought Ryan Laubach, especially with the veer mm -hmm. option they ran tonight, which was tough to defend. But they, Dallas at the halftime made those adjustments and stopped that. They absolutely did, and they pulled this one out 22-12, holding Berwick scoreless in the second half. So next week, it's on to Dunmore. Lakeland taking on the Bucks, another big game in our Friday Night Rivals game of the week. So for the entire Fox 56 sports crew, did an awesome job tonight. For Paul Grippy, who needs to get warm. For Jan Sechak, this is Bob I saying so long. From the back mountain. You're watching Allied Services Friday Night Rivals on MyTV WQMY.